Dark Hunting League Championships. I'm joined by Amaz. Um, or I'm joined by Frodan, actually, right now. <laughs> we are you guys the next match between Celestial and Liquid. How's it going, Frodan? Uh, well, Amaz, it's going all right. I'm um, just gonna, you know, let the viewers and everybody know what oh, happened to the The jig's up. Change. You're not Frodan. Yeah. You're actually Amaz. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, you um, we... people we... for a second there. Mm -hmm. But with the cast of Switch, uh, we realized that it wasn't working out as expected. There are a little bit too many offenses, I guess, and I'm just going to sub in for today. Uh, but don't worry, guys. Um, we'll have like, oh, we review the caster group once uh, this uh, today is finished, and we'll have, you know, perfect broadcast next week, I hope. But for now, you get you guys get me. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold a candle vigil after this broadcast. Everyone's mm. welcome to join us. In the meantime, let's focus on the positive. We have a great match coming up, and it's the first time we'll be seeing Team Celestial versus Team Liquid up on the stream. Now, you might have heard of Team Liquid if you follow a lot of games, whether it's through StarCraft, you know, Team Liquid's also really doing well in Heroes of the Storm and a few other games. But you might not have heard too much of Team Celestial. Uh, can you go ahead and give the background of what you know, Amaz, about this team? I just know that Tiddler is, uh, well, in my opinion, the best player in the world right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I saw him play at Dreamhack. I actually see him play in a lot of events, right? There was the VIA game thing as well, and he just mm -hmm. plays really, really well. The only time he messes up is uh, when he won the game already, and it was only once in Dreamhack. So I think he's actually one of the best, one of the best players, if not the best right now. So that's mm -hmm. certainly going to be the highlight uh for, of that team. Uh, Frozen Ice and Silent Storm, uh, not much is known about them. I guess Silent Storm played in uh, some ESO tournaments, right? Uh, do you know much about yep. his play style? Yeah, you know, Silent Storm is known to be a really big, um, uh, unusual player. Like, he, he likes taking decks and making them surprise people. In the ESL land, when he won the Legendary Series Season 1, he mm -hmm. did it with a lineup that was really weird. He was the first to really try to make Demon Log work. People were like, why... Why is he playing like implosions and Malganus and Mistress? Of that, that's what <laughs> okay. he was doing. Right. And um, he also brought a lineup with Priest and at the time Mage, when no one was playing Mage post GVG. And uh, and he was also playing Shaman at the time a lot of mid range Shaman. So he's a very unconventional player. That's why people really like watching him because his decks are unique. And Frozen Ice is kind of like Taiwan's um, Kalento or. Like, you know, hyped in a way, like really known for always topping the, the ends of ladder, uh, played yeah. like Miracle Rogue and Patron Warrior a lot. Like he's he's kind of like Roger, too, who um, just basically like a practice machine, literally loves grinding it out. So these guys are really fearsome. If you don't know about them now, uh, don't be too mad when they beat your favorite players later, because I think that they come in here as one of the, the teams to probably take one of those offline spots by force. And if you're underestimating them, you won't be for very long. Uh, yeah, but let's not forget about Team Liquid, of course. Savage has been a veteran since Hearthstone's start. And of course, they recently picked up Sho, a very strong player. Uh, no no uh, surprise that he's running the Warrior for their team. And of course, yeah. Naria has been um, doing pretty well as well. Uh, still looking for that big tournament win, but maybe it's going to be the Team League Championships. Who knows? Yeah, I kind of imagined the way Team Liquid gathered together and strategized for this was show was like, okay, I'm playing Warrior. Let's take the, <laughs> the first let's thing ever. The right? other eight classes, yeah. <laughs> and so right, he's, yeah. he's like, well, okay, I'll play whatever. And Nyria loves playing his own specialized decks. I'm actually surprised Nyria is not on Warlock, considering that he's been one of the primary innovators for that uh, Mali Ghost Warlock that we've been love seeing so far. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, like the Mage here is an interesting pick too. I really think that. Freeze Mage um, is pretty good in this format for sure, but I mm -hmm. also feel like other parts of Mage are underrepresented because they're just they're also really strong. It feels like Freeze Mage definitely is the strongest, but um, you, there is room to also surprise an opponent too in this type of format. Yeah, especially with all the patrons running around, Freeze Mage is definitely a much better choice uh, because it's only really weak against Control Warrior. Uh, because you guys mentioned uh, beforehand in this uh, cast that. Freeze Mage against Patron, you can just burn him out of like minions, and then they don't have anything else to like really kill you, and it goes to fatigue. So that's something we can definitely see. All right, cool. Well, I think the first game is about to start, but let's get to learn these players a little bit more. We also have another video just to show you a little bit more and get to know these guys better. Uh, my name is Dan Cho. I go by the name Frodan. Uh, I'm the manager of Tempest Hearthstone team, and I also work for Twitch as their Hearthstone's partnerships team. 
What? I like that Archon's bringing something new, but not too new that it completely throws everything you know, out of order. Uh, it's an interesting twist on not only just being able to play Conquest, but also the team dynamics. So I think uh, bringing unique classes and having a really good lineup of preparation, people really undervalue that because it requires uh, a little bit of unique deck building as well as it gives you the ability to play styles because not everyone has to play the same three decks in a best of five Conquest format. Uh, the secret of being a good caster is the secret to being a good player. It's just practice, uh, hard work, dedication, and a little bit of luck. Uh, you have to network, be able to talk to the right people, but also be prepared to be in the right spot and be able to go at any time. Uh, my biggest achievement in life so far is probably just being able to make a living off of this industry in general. There was a time where I wasn't doing very well, I was a college dropout, and I pursued my dreams and what I love doing. And this is everything that I could have asked for. I think when people have to deal with negative criticism and just in general people bashing on them a little bit, I think the most important thing is to listen to what they have to say um, and try to ignore the tone of what they're trying to say. A lot of times people, they express disinterest or antagonism because there's something that they, maybe they're trying to help you with, but maybe you're lost in the wording like, no, I'm not horrible or bad or forget the wording just try to interpret the tone and see what they're driving at there's a lot of advice that i'd want to give a person who's first getting into the industry of esports there's a lot of generic ones too you know be yourself you know don't be stupid you know watch and learn you know be humble these things are pretty you know run of the mill everyone already has heard these type of pieces of advice the most important thing that I would tell people to do is to find the right group of friends and circle of influence. You know, I can't just express enough gratitude towards how well everything's been received. I'm just an average person doing what I love, and I can't believe everyone has been so supportive of everything that I've done. I'm so lucky to be where I am, and I want to just always say that I never take anything for granted. I read all the comments, I try to read all the emails and answer as much as I can. And even though I'm only one person, I really hope I can try to represent everybody as to the best of my abilities. So thank you so much. All right, so we got to know me a lot better, which is awesome because I'm my favorite subject to talk about. Whoa, so okay. thank you very much, Maz, for that. <laughs> uh, I like the workout. That was clip. really that was just so humiliating. Why'd you show that? Oh, Wait, where can people find the full workout clip that you did? Uh, um, <laughs> I I am on actually on a mission to burn every trace of those videos on the internet. But oh, to no man. avail, it doesn't work because the internet lives forever. So be careful, kids. I am an example of how not to do things at a young age to try to game fame. Don't do it. It's not worth it. In right, the meantime, well, guys, we're ready for our first match. I wonder if we're just going to blow through it. We have Silent Storm versus Savitz. Um, mm -hmm. Silent Storm, uh, well, I got to admit, man, he's holding it. He's holding his cards very Yu-Gi-Oh-esque style. And Savitz, he's holding a dagger. Um, I'm, I'm guessing because Rogue is his favorite class. Yeah, Rogue is his favorite class. I mean, okay. I had that when um, the artist asked me for, like, you know, notes for each player. And I was really su surprised yeah. that Savitz is actually using Rogue in this, uh, in this series. So that's not really an accurate picture, but still, he won a lot of tournaments with Rogue, right? He won his story with the Malagos Rogue, mm -hmm. that was uh, very successful actually at the time. I don't think anybody's playing Malagos Rogue uh, now at all, but we're gonna see a mirror match to start here. Both Warlocks, uh, what do you expect these Warlocks to be? Uh, well, I think Savitz would bring Handlock, but he's actually capable of playing anything. Like, mm -hmm. actually, both players are really capable of bringing anything. I feel like Silent Storm would bring more of the weird stuff. Like, if he wants to bring Demon Lock or um, Demon Handlock or Mally Ghost Warlock. What about you? What do you think? I think both players are going to bring Mally Lock. But judging by this hand, I think uh, at least one person is bringing Zoo. Yeah. Well, may maybe, maybe a mid range is Zoo because he's got. Some other things. And there, there are ways to differ across the zoos. Um, mm -hmm. Some people top out at Malganis. Some people be really aggressive. We've seen people also go like super aggressive, right? Like Dark Bomb and Soulfire. And yeah. Playing really big burn cards. Uh, it's I interesting that like Safish chose to keep the whole hand there. Um, I guess you're kind of like um, placing your, hedging your bets, I guess, with the abusive. But I feel like the abusive is. Uh, not really going to be played a turn one now, is it? Mm -hmm. 
Probably not. I mean, you, the, the good thing about Zoo now is that because the way it ramps up and the way it, you can gain tempo, you don't actually have to have the blistering fast start all the time. There's still ways for you to win um, even without it. That's nice, though. Flame Imp Bunker. <laughs> Flame Imp is the best. It's the best top deck, actually. And both players are actually playing Zoo. That's, uh, I, I did not expect that at all. Um, since Sire Storm did bring that... Um, it was the combo lock that he brought at ESL, right? It's not, it wasn't Demon Lock. Oh, you actually, I think you might be right. Yeah, it was the well, Arcane Golem with the Power of Whelmings and the Facelesses. Right, right. I think that it is right. And he was like using Zelay's version, in fact, but like diff like with his own spin on it. Right. But yeah, yeah, we're yeah, yeah you're completely right. My, <laughs> uh, it was like the combo demon. I just remember he played Mistress of Pain. I was like, what? Yeah, so. Yeah. I, I, if I can recall that, I think he also had a Demon Heart, which was really cool, too. Yeah, some um, cool cards. But for this one, I guess uh, we'll just have to see if people, uh, if these players are going to actually hit some big demons of Bane of Doom, right? Um, is that a card you actually like in Zoo? Because I think it's like super powerful, but uh, it is a five mana card, so uh, you can't really run things like Lothab anymore. Yeah, it's extremely expensive, but I think it provides a lot of interesting flexibility to Zoo because... Um, sometimes you need to reach past things and like uh, you know eliminate them, especially if you're playing this type of match where there's a lot of annoying things being tucked away, like the knife jugglers and whatnot. So I think okay. it's so I think it's okay personally. Okay. And it can go past taunts, right? Though. Yeah, I've seen you use it a lot though. Yeah, so I, I don't use know double you're copies because I mean, why not summon a Morganus? I mean, my RNG <laughs> is good, but yeah. uh, I've been facing it out uh, lately because it's very expensive. I think. I, I think I think Bane of Doom is like a perfect card for you, Amaz. Because you, oh, you were playing the priest for a while and everyone was like, you know, hoping like they were wanting to watch your thought steals. That was the big right, thing. Right, right. And then you started, you know, realizing priest might not be the best class to bring. So you started gravitating towards other stuff, you know, hunters and handlocks, etc. But like where was the Amaz flare? And then when Bane of Doom came out, I was and like started getting reworked, I was like, Oh, that's definitely an Amaz card for sure. Well the thing is like mm, Thought Steel is better than Bane of Doom for sure because it's just like you can pull more legendaries, right? And like Bane of Doom, you kind of need there's Only a one requirement. Yeah, yeah. Well, one legendary, yeah. <laughs> sure, okay. So. Two is more than one. So um, here, Savage, um, you know, um, it's looking like his board is pretty weak actually. So Sunstorm can actually have an option to tap here if he wants to <laughs> just to match up on the uh, card size. But nope, he's just gonna play everything down. And hopefully a good Bane of Doom next turn. Yeah, that, it's unfortunate that the implosion was so swingy where it just very clearly dictated that he's not able to do anything um, the pre like on that turn. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, this matchup's still far from over based off the way the hands look, right? Yeah. If you can deal with the board one time where you have a lot of cleanup, where you get a big taunt or big minion, then, um, I mean, it's as simple as Void Caller pulling out Malganus or uh, Doomguard. Yeah, it looks like Savage has a very good next turn uh, with the Void Terror basically forcing the Void Call to die. Actually, we have we see a oh wow we have a Shredder in the Zoo deck. Hmm. That's something we don't see hmm. too much. That's really curious. Pilot Shredder. That's something that I wasn't expecting. Um, just because it feels like. It, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense if you're playing more of a mid range style, anyways. You know, the, <laughs> the Pilot Shredder is great for building the board. But like, what, what's the purpose do you think it functions other than just having a really strong, sticky, sturdy minion? Uh, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think the function is to um, actually defeat more mid rangey decks, right? I mean, against something like Rogue or something like a Warrior, uh, Shredder is their worst nightmare. So they have to have to kill it twice. Um, and I guess that's what going that's what's going through Silent Storm's um, head uh -huh. when he's going to uh, through the deck building process. He's expecting more of those, or maybe he just wants a better matchup against those classes. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit unique, I guess. Not everybody's putting playing shredders, and this sea mm -hmm. giant from Savage is gonna do a lot of work. Yeah, he's actually got a way to play sea giant and void terror this turn, right? Is there? Yeah, so I think you kill the haunted creepers. Oh, then, that's actually really cute. Mm -hmm. Play okay. the. I mean, I don't know if you want to do that per se because it might be better to eliminate the higher attack minions. But if you if you want to go for like the big. Biggest swing possible. Wait, but you can you even do that? I don't think you can because you kill the creeper and only one takes his place, right? So it's gonna be at three mana. So yeah, I don't think it works out as no, well. No, because then you summon another minion with void terror. Um, yeah, but then you eat your void terror as well. 
Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. So maybe I missed like, count. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, maybe I missed Doom Guard. Oh my god. Oh, but it does have time. Does he have time to play it? Oh, or uh, do anything oh, with it? Oh, did he attack with it? Let's see. Uh, I think he did. I think he did. He, he like hovered over it. Oh, okay. 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 Wow. Ooh, close moment. Close moment. That would suck if he. Oh man. <clears throat> uh, mm. Doom Guard as well. I think. I think Doom Guard is just too important here. Yeah, I think you're okay with parting ways with the Pilot Shredder. You can yeah. kill off the Void Terror and then play this Doom Guard and control the board oh, command. Oh, wow. Oh, he actually wants to um, there it is. get more value out of his uh, cards. So, Implosion in the middle. Mm -mm. Uh, that's that's pretty bad. Yeah, sea Giant is going to be... Sea Giant is going to be amazing. Oh, Pretty man. cheap. Yeah, that's uh, it's a three, three mana, mana. Sea Giant. Three mana Sea Giant. No, oh. it's not a very good card though. The best would be a two drop right now. Not one drop's fine, I guess. Why not? Why? Yeah, the Void Caller is surprisingly effective, given that his opponent doesn't really have a way to push through it effectively, <laughs> other than just one one's crashing against it, or he wants mm -hmm. to use Doom Guard. And uh, well, I guess you can. Wait, that's kind of weird. What's, yeah, what's this weird? This is kind of awkward. Because, like, if you play the Void Walker first, you can't play the Doom Guard without sacrificing a 1 1. Yeah, you can just push in the, the 1 1s here. It's fine. Yeah, okay. Just I like that he's keeping the Imps, too. Yeah, in case yeah, he has Malganus, then the Imps get this Demon Synergy. Of course. Uh, what I'd like the Shroud to be in the middle, right? Generally speaking, yes. Um,. I think there was an exception that I was told once based on Violet Teacher. If Violet Teacher is in your deck, then you generally want the Pilot Shredder to be on the outside because then the 1-1s one get the buffs over oh, the yeah, Violet yeah, Teacher. Yeah. That and was of course, we're told. talking about the Flame Tongue Totem or the Dire Wolf Alpha that's pops up the Shredder. Right, because it yeah. gives the minions next to it plus attack. Mm -hmm. Small optimization. I actually lost the DreamHack match uh, because that one game, I forgot to do that. I got Flame Tongue and then uh, I couldn't uh, get the 2 damage. Was it, the, was it a match that... It was in Swiss? Or it wasn't the, streamed. It wasn't streamed. Okay. So, yeah. So, you made your life harder by doing that. Okay. Yeah. You still end up I, qualifying for top eight I like a boss. Won. Right, right, right. But still, it, uh, it's, you're not supposed to do like mistakes like these at such a high level. <laughs> but uh, right now, um, Savish is looking, um, looking like he's in a very troubling spot. Because the thing is, like, if he taps right now, um, he's down to 11 and he's actually dead from Doomguard. So, he yep. might actually skip on tapping, but. Man, he's staring at the world's most valuable world, uh, Void Walker. It's a 1-8! Yeah. It absorbed 8 damage. Right. But so, Savish not tapping means that he's going to survive one more turn. But if I'm Silent Storm right now, I would just play Doom Guard and just go all phase. Um, because he can't. if your opponent can't tap anymore, the options are super limited. And of course, you play the uh, in game boss first. Yeah, you utilize the 8 mana, play the Doom Guard. Pilot Shredder still be on the outside. That's true. Guess well, he's an if, introvert. If the Doom Guard is placed on the left. That's true. There's, yeah. there's still potential. No? Yeah. Doom Guard likes the spot. Doom Guard is in a, 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 you know, he likes the attention. He likes being yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually going to um, hedge his best one more time. Uh, I guess Soundstorm did lose to double power overwhelming, but it's highly unlikely. So here, I guess the Vige is going to die anyways. You might as well just tap here before Argus. Right. Defender of Argus would be great. Yep. Everything else would be kind of bad. Oh, oh my sweet lord. Mary of Joseph. Um, Commentator's blessing, I guess. That is crazy. So <laughs> if he does this, though, does he still survive? Because he's working on effectively 13 health, and his opponent will have 13 damage next turn. Well, well, for, uh, 15 health, because the Argus buffs him by one. Right? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. So about that. I would, would you go face with the with the with the giant? I would pretty much go face here. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to clear something if you can't clear them all. Yes, I agree. You make you actually make it a little bit easier sometimes to get through by doing so. The other the alternative is to try to attack a thing that makes it the least convenient. Like so, for example, naturally he'll want to use his um his doom guard to try to go into the giant because it's it's on low health anyways. Sure. But so then you try to like make it so it's awkward, but there's really no way to make it awkward trade for Silence to him. So oh, I like no. the face attack. Oh my god, double shredder. Jesus. So Very he's not got one heavy. or two he's got two shredders. Yeah, two shredders. Yeah. 
Oh wow, can we get Leto with some juggles? Um, potentially, because he's got. He, he's got a lot. Two, yeah, he's got three juggles at least. Yep. So the first one, um, we'll see where it goes. Oh, face is face. good. Face. Face is good. Well, actually, that's... anything that's just not the Argus, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, you <laughs> had a four target oh, you want to hit. Yeah. All right. So here's another one. Whoa! Oh, uh, is that the the end of the dream? It, uh. Yeah. Nah, it doesn't really matter. It's still like really tough for Shibuya to come back from this spot. Oh really? He just needs to top the Doom Guard. That's not that hard. Boom! No. Mm, okay, so tap, here's the question, it, right? Or well, no. do you want to play Malganus here? I wouldn't. I think Malganus is the real safe play, and it's like the guarantee thing. He has to draw Owl to get past it and kill you. Right, or his own then, damage. Or his yeah, own yeah, damage. Yeah, but then problem. he kills your Malganus pretty much, right? Mm. Like, hmm. Right. But then you squeeze in. Th He's going to dedicate seven damage to Malganus. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You should tap first. If, oh, wait, so if Savage is doing this, he's going to play Malganus, right? Right. So I think you kill the Shredder and hope for a minion that has less than two attack. So that your Malganus actually sticks on the board. Right, but you should he's kill the Shredder first. I think. Oh, man. He's thinking about it. He's thinking of tapping just to win right now. This is really hard. He hasn't seen. Savage hasn't seen a Doomguard yet. Mm hmm. It, it's also like Abusive Sergeant hypothetically could help him too if you got the juggle. But I think this is just the real safe guaranteed play. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, man, that's not a good okay. one. Well, yeah, there's still hope though. It's not completely over. That's oh, not Flame helpful is so at all. Dead. Yeah, what is this one? Oh, that's also a dead card. Mm. Well, the Polish Shredder might pop something though. Well, that stops Doom Guard. <laughs> <laughs> that does actually do stop. Anything. Anything. Yeah. Well, Savish is gonna. Enough. If Savish sees a Doom Guard, he's gonna be pretty pissed oh. off because he would have won. He exposes last himself time. now to an owl in a Doom Guard. Oh, but then that's two card combo. I don't think you play around that, right? Yeah. Oh, wait. That's three juggles. So you need two juggles to hit the Flame Imp at least to stay alive. What if it that's hits basically. three times the Unstable Ghoul? And then oh! it hits the Boombots, go to the face, and kill him. That's a win, right? I want, I want that to happen, Amaz. I think everybody does. And that's, he can actually like... double... Oh, he can double his chances. Because he can power overwhelming oh, yeah, 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 yeah. one of the, the Boombots. Boom the Boombots, yeah. And oh, that wow, that's dies actually really cool. Wow. Okay, let's try. Actually, so if one juggle actually goes to the face, he might have a lethal chance, too. He might have lethal chance. All right. Yeah, go for it. He's a big juggler, and... Oh, that's no. good. That's good. That makes him stay alive. Oh, oh. my god, he stays alive. Oh, All right, so do you okay, perform no. now? Because if you hit the egg, you lose. But <laughs> if you also hit the face for four, he can't tap. Okay, so do you take the chance here? <laughs> I would say so. You have Dr. Oh, Boom on the chance. field. Oh, Savish is a gambler. Where's the Boomer going to go? One out of four. Oh, no! no! <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. It wouldn't have mattered, but... Uh, that's still oh, the yeah, worst it, but still, it was quite disastrous. <laughs> um, <laughs> rightfully so, Silent Storm didn't show the card that Savit, he drew it anyways, because he would have beaten Savit no matter the outcome um, uh, of that boom bot hitting, but that was really fun. That was a really fun way to end that, the game. Uh, zoo games are not supposed to be that fun, I think. Well, maybe. Sometimes with Bane of Doom shenanigans and whatnot, but that was a really cool zoo game. And uh, Celestial yeah. is on the board. There it is. So, first game out of the way for Silent Storm, um... And what's important about beating Warlock in Conquest is that not only do you get to see the cards, but now you know what it is. So you can pass the information to your teammates. They don't have to mulligan as defensively for certain things. Or they, can, you know, they can be more aggressive with how they go for their early game mulligan. So I, I like that this is a really powerful move for Celestial, and Team Liquid's already on the back foot. Uh, would you think that both teams are kind of on that strategy, just queuing Warlock first? I think uh, you might be onto something because, yeah, people have to guess what type it is. They'll mulligan it incorrectly. And if it wins, then, you know, it's safe. Yeah, that's so. why I personally I like Warlock to start off in any Conquest lineup format. Because, okay. um, it, I mean, in any deck, the most powerful it'll ever be is in the first time you play it. So mm -hmm. I think Warlock gets amplified based off its versatility. Mage, too, to a certain extent. But True. it feels like we haven't seen anything that's not Freeze Mage, right? Have you seen any other non-Freeze Mage decks so far? Not really. I mean, uh, I actually, <laughs> in the Starlight Tournament just now, I went 06 with my Temple Mage. I won with all of my other oh. decks. So oh. it was pretty crushing. It's really good against um, aggro, but then there's...
Go see it in the second week. Because actually, I predicted Kalento to bring Priest. He's been playing I so much so Priest. Yeah. He plays it for all of his open tournaments as well. But um, maybe there's just not a build for Priest that he figured out just yet. You saw Kalento messing around on stream too. He's playing like Dragon Priest or Resurrect Priest. Like he was experimenting with a bunch of stuff. But it just feels like it's, um, it's just not as good of a control deck as other control decks. And... Well, it's a terrible aggro deck. <laughs> so there's no way you can really make that work. There's one aggro deck, did you see, on the Chinese ladder? Where you play... Um, you play, like, a bunch of the early game drops, like sure. Northshire Clerics and the Death Lords, but you also play, like, Mind Blasts and Holy Smites. Oh! And um, you also... Yeah, and then you, you, you actually have Jeeves, and that's the highest cost card in your oh, entire geez, deck. Oh, jeez, Jesus, okay. Uh, not that. Yeah, uh, but Fireback showed really me uh, Freeze Priest deck... That has like Valen and double Mind Blast as the finisher, but you kind of have to draw Emperor, right? Um, he says the win rate is actually over fifty percent to people who don't know what they what it is, and um, if people know where your deck is, then it's under fifty percent. So, well, the it's... interesting thing about this Priest deck is that I think it hit top ten Legend in China. Oh, um, wow! So it, it was, yeah. I, I don't mind. Oh, I can show it to you later because I think well, we'll maybe see. it'd be fun. But I, I showed China... it to some other guys in Demo Storm, and they're like, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah. it's, it's bad. I was like, okay. Yeah, China decks are always very, um, very creative, right? They really like their yeah. Kazan mistakes and Harrison Jones. They like those swing cards a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, well, I think we're gonna see some from the Steam Celestials uh, decks uh, that they brought today. I want to see what Frozen Ice has because I think um, he's one of the big uh, wild cards here in the series. We we sort of know what to expect from the other five players. Uh, a lot of them are solid ladder guys, tournament players, performers. But Frozen Ice, he actually doesn't have many tournament results. Um, and the reason why I compare him to Hype in the first place is because it feels like the same way. He's very respected amongst the peers that are familiar mm -hmm. with him. Um, he does really great on ladder. But his tournament results, they're just kind of lacking. Um, in BlizzCon, he got pretty far in his region, but he wasn't able to get the final hump over. And a lot of the tournaments he enters in Taiwan, um, it's usually like Tom, Tom60229 or Roger are the Taiwanese mm -hmm. players that people pay attention to, and they don't really know Frozen Eyes. I just, I just think his picture looks like a magazine cover. So yeah, he's also a GQ good. model that also is, you know, oh. in, sharp, in stark contrast to some of the other people who also play Hearthstone. <laughs> They're more focused on the Hearthstone aspect of it. He clearly is well groomed. Okay, that, that, that's important too, right? It is, because there's more to life than just playing Hearthstone. Not much more, but there's still a few things here and there. All right. Like, well, uh, we just, hygiene. Uh... Hygiene's very important to Mons. And I hope everyone who ever <laughs> goes to a Hearthstone event also knows that. Uh, sure. Uh, that reminded me of a conversation I had with somebody. I don't know. I think it's Chalky. Like, um, he mentioned that some player was like really smelly, and then it was actually getting to his nerves, and he played worse than, you know, he previously did. Oh man, the ultimate mind game. Yeah, Not is that even allowed so you though? Distract your opponent. Mm, I think they should include it in the rules that you must shower or you must at least you know be a bit. Can you hygienic. put it at least in the Archon rules? <laughs> the Archon yeah. rules. We're yeah. gonna make some crazy rules for the live finale. Like you have to dress up as an angry chicken if you get beat by the card. Oh okay. Well, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to see where you guys go with that because I think mm -hmm. that could be either really funny or really awkward or maybe both. We'll definitely do the workout segments with you, Verdan. Nope, I'm that? not coming. Change my mind, guys. Okay, so we have uh, Tiddler as Warrior right here, and Show is going to play as Hunter. Um, you know the Show graphic there? What does it resemble? It looks kind of like Death Note. Uh, wait, wait. Um, uh, uh, it's it's not ringing a bell. It looks very menacing. Like uh, what? Like really? Okay. Oh, oh, then, then, oh man, thought I got the reference across. Maybe chat knows, but um, it's the warrior pose. It's Garrosh's pose. You know, he's sitting on this throne kind of thing. Oh. I, th I, I, th I don't know. Oh, man. Oh, I, okay. I can, I can kind I mean? of see it now. Yeah, I think you should have brought out the tusks on him. Kind of like oh, Garrosh has those so little... That's like, going all the way, man. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a reference. You have to kind of go all out. I'm really okay. slow on these type of things, man. I don't get sarcasm very easily on that. I mean, the Kalento is a pirate. You, uh, I don't think you... That was very literal, right? I like that. Okay. But this is, this is just looking like, you know, I, I stole his tuna sandwich for lunch or something. <laughs> He's looking at me pretty angrily. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, here we go. They finally loaded. Uh, sorry about the delay because uh, apparently the first game crashed. So we're just going to have to uh, redo the game here. And looks like we have a patron versus a... Hunter. We don't know yet. Yeah, a hunter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for, Amaz. Thanks, sure. thank you. Sorry. Yep. That's what we got you for. <laughs> so I pay me the big bucks. Mm -hmm. We got a show with the patron warrior, but more importantly, he's got early game plays to do. Sometimes the patron warrior takes too much pressure from Hunter, and that leads to them taking too much damage, and they can't answer. Because Hunter has some pretty high-value minions. Like, how do you deal with mad scientists efficiently sometimes? Or, you know, how do you deal with a high main if it gets down really safe? Well, I think it just depends on if the uh, warrior has, like, a weapon early on, like Fire War Axe. That's really much the answer to all ag aggression... Um, Dex that are aggressive, I guess. And Red Knot Tiddler doesn't have one, so he has to come up with some creative way to deal with this Nerf Juggler and, you know, minions to follow as well. Well, Amaz said that he thinks Tiddler's the best player in the world. Raynat actually agrees, so this first oh. time thing, you know. Are we agreeing on something here? Yeah, Whoa, that's, Tiddler that's busting that's up the amazing. fad? Oh my god. It's a Hearthstone fan too, right? A, wow. I think so. That's, yeah, because you can see the guys playing Hearthstone right there in the yard. Remember when Trump busted a fan before? I did. Yeah. I did. And I, I remember thinking up. the same thing I'm thinking now, which is, what? why do you need a fan? I'm very <laughs> curious. Maybe it's more of a moral thing. Maybe it's like... Rodan, uh, not everybody has as many fans as you, okay? Ah! Says the guy with the biggest fan in the room. I get it. The thing about the, the fan, too, is that um, it, it gives you something to hold, so maybe mentally you're able to, like... You know, process things a little bit. Better. This is a really great play, by the way. Clearing the board, drawing cards, sets up for battle rage. Um, this is a bad spot for the hunter. Oh well. Oh, ne ne well, this is a little bit of a relief, but I guess yeah. you still can't play anything else to back up the animal companion, right? So, do you just like quick shot this hero power and set up an animal companion with a freezing trap next turn? Because the main, um, the main goal of a hunter is to play a high main on empty board, right? The high main rule, as in like. That's what you're trying to accomplish, right? Yeah, I mean, you have two high mains in your hand. So you might as well go ahead and focus your entire mid-game win condition based upon these cards, being able to get as much mileage as possible. Yeah. Sure, Hunter might be able to, or sure, Warrior might execute that card. Mm -hmm. They might even deal with the first high main, but the second high main, assuming you can get that down safely and, war and Warrior's still struggling to set up their own win condition, that's going to be really devastating to handle. Mm -hmm. Especially, you don't really see uh, warriors keeping execute, right? So they have to draw to the second one mm -hmm. when two high mains are up. Uh, Show is going to freeze the um, freeze Tiddler's uh, uh, acolyte to prevent more draw. And oh man, that's a pretty good card. See, if, if he actually quick shot the acolyte and set up a freezing trap, um, he would have a very nice board. Uh, this turn with the trap up and the two minions and then the Savan Hyman comes down the board With this play he gets to keep the quick shot, but um, I think with the other play he would have more board So now Tiddler actually has a chance to kind of try and deal with this board How should he though? There's multiple well, ways to play this turn mm -hmm. Well, with Despite it gets kind of difficult Mm-hmm Okay, so he's going for the draw as many cards as possible route. Oh, yeah, okay, so he kills off the kills off the Leoc, draws two cards. Yeah, and then probably just play the Accolade. Oh, you have an option here. Yeah, Fiery War Axe might look like the appealing option, but I think he still wants to draw cards. And also, it fills out his curve too. Next turn, he also can play Slam Fiery War Axe and make it a little bit more even on the mana. Mhm, mm sounds right. Uh, I expect this to be another freezing because the Wolf Rider just appeared on the hand. And the only way a Wolf Rider appears in a Savannah High Main deck is if it's hybrid, right? And hybrids only run two traps, and those are both freezings. Generally speaking, yes, but I feel like there's also this weird dynamic where sometimes the hunters feel obligated to mix things up. Maybe for no reason at all, because maybe to be less predictable. Okay. So sometimes it's like, you know, a random snake trap or something like that. Yeah, but sometimes you go into so uh, big lengths to be different and you yeah. just screw up your deck at the end, right? Yeah, I, 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 that I can completely agree with. I think yeah. sometimes uh, people try too hard to be different and unique. 
um, just for the sake of doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. No, like they, they convince themselves that snake trap's better when it's like probably not. You know, maybe the two fuse trap is better. Well, I respect their choice, but sometimes you still gotta win the game. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, so we see that Sho has the second high main, and once again, it's very hard for warriors to deal with this. Um, and it looks like Tiller can't even with um, his current hand. What now? Hmm. Also, yeah. one turn off the combo, right? Well, could he set it up so that way it'd be better next turn to do it? Um, well, like if you do, now. it's probably Despite, right? And it, you really don't want to hit the Hyena because you want to propagate more patrons. So do you just, well, Despite the face? I suppose so. You have to get to a second charge somehow. Yeah. What, Despite the setup to, sure. mm, It does set up to kill the... Um, the high main as well, but you'll be taking another 6 damage from the 10 you're going to take this next turn. And it just looks really, really tough in this situation. Mm. Tiller is going to hit the face here, just so the execute can do work next game. Um, next game. <laughs> Jesus, next turn. That's right. He's going to execute him so hard, it'll kill him next game. It'll show that hyena who's boss. Um, oh, wow. Uh, this might be lethal, actually, if he gets the right animal companion here. Oh, that's that's a good oh, one too. Still a lot if, of damage. Sixteen. It's the exact same damage as a Huffle. Uh, oh my gosh, that's oh four man. damage off the Wolf Rider, so it's just that, as good as Huffer. Yeah, that is a lot of pressure. Oh my god. All right, well, it was a nice try, Tiddler. Um, nice I don't think he's gonna be able to. Do oh whoa, whoa, whoa! This. Wait a minute here. Oh no. He doesn't have like twelve mana. <laughs> Yeah, I hate it when that happens. You just don't have 12 mana. Keep in mind, the Leopard Gnome's also too damage too off the, yeah. off the death rattle. So even if you can get like a lot of life through the Armorsmith, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of damage coming in next turn with the Leopard Gnome guaranteed, whatever comes out of the high main, the quick shot, and the hero power. Is there a way he can actually play the Armorsmith and the Taskmaster and stay alive? Um... I mean, it's looking like... Mm. Well, this is a really nice play. It's mighty pretty, but he can't even kill off every minion, right? Right, but does he stay alive? I don't know. I don't think so. Because the quick well, shot and the hero power is uh, 5 damage plus the... Yeah. Items. But still, Tilla tried really hard to stay alive there. Yeah, that was, just, that was still a really cool play. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, shows like, hmm, that's a mighty fine play. It'd be a shame if I had the quick shot to my hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. look at that! I do. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So he, uh, I guess, Tiddler was really, really dead. But um, yeah, Tim Liquid um, gets a one point on the score as well, and uh, shows Hunter's through. Yep. And again, being able to identify what deck it is and being able to pass off the information, very useful for Liquid. But the series is just getting started. If there's anything we've learned in Best of 11 is that plenty of room for comebacks. And that's kind of like the purpose of it, right? The Best of 11 gives the ability for um, some of the variants to be controlled. You can't always control all of it, but you have more opportunities to demonstrate over a lot of games. If you play as one team, you can kind of go off of that result. Because 6-3 is pretty convincing over, you know... 11 games compared to like a 3 2. Because I feel like when I watch best of fives, I just look at the scores and it's 3 2s all the time. I'm like, wow, I really could have gone either way. Yeah. Uh, with the team format as well, um, you winning two games is good and all, right? I mean, obviously, you want yourself to win two games, but sometimes that's not enough. So you kind of want to. Um, well, at least the motivation is that you can practice with your teammates a lot and you're only as good as your worst player on the team. So you might as well all be good, um, you know, at this format. So that's kind of what we're trying to bring here with this uh, new Team Conquest format. Okay. Well, <clears throat> so far, so good. Uh, we mm -hmm. have eight weeks of this. And um, I, think we're, I think the cool thing will be when we see other teams match up against others because, um, unfortunately, most tournaments, people get eliminated pretty early and you don't right. really get to see a full fleshing out of stuff. But the, every team is guaranteed to play at least every other team once. Yeah, pretty much... Um, Every team has enough ch uh, opportunities and chances to show off their skills and the uh, team that goes in 8th place, well, you can't make a lot of excuses, you get what I mean? Uh, because you did lose like a lot of games to be in that 
place. We're not like yeah. forcing you to like <clears throat> play every single deck that you are not good at. Uh, you just need to like adapt around your teammates and you know figure out a good game plan going to this. Yeah, you lost forty eight games to get to that spot. No, no, fifty six games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. Forty two. Forty two. Sorry, math is math is really hard for me right now. Yeah. The other day in stream, I did six plus five equals thirteen, and I actually sat there for like two minutes figuring out why I didn't have lethal. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. Streamer life, man. Not not as yeah, tough like, as the thug life, but pretty close. <laughs> the counting is actually really hard. I don't think a lot of people actually get like because I studied math in university, right? It's nothing like the sort. Um, you know, you have all these formulas and whatnot. Everything just goes well. But when you do like basic arithmetic in a in a card game, it's really difficult. Because all, a lot of things can happen, and even during your turn, weird things can happen, like boom bots actually messing up your number count and whatnot, knife juggler, you know, doing some weird stuff. So I think it's hard. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deny you there. It can be really difficult, especially mm -hmm. if you have a lot of numbers going through your head. But it's not difficult too much for these guys. I think uh, they're gonna be able to focus pretty well. Um, one person that I think people will also be surprised about is Nyria from Team Liquid. I think he's a very underrated player. Most people don't really know too much about him um, if you don't follow his stream or you haven't really followed some of his tournament results. Mm -hmm. They might even be surprised to hear that he's on Team Liquid because he's relatively quiet. But if you look at the ladders and you look at him, people hyped him up for a long time to be maybe the second coming of Kalento. Um, not to mention they have the Ukrainian connection. Okay. And I think he hasn't lived up to that expectation, but he certainly carved out to be his own individual, unique person. So I hope Nyria does well. Yeah, uh, Hearthstone today. does need more mellow people, you know. I think mellow people? Mellow, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be like, you know, um, all big and out there, I guess. So I, I, I like Nyria. Nyria is cool. I actually okay. met him for the first time in uh, DreamHack, and um, yeah, he was a really cool guy. Yeah, he actually used to be... Um, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to like make up stuff. But I. I want to say that he used to fight. Like he used to fight. MMA, like MMA, I think. Oh my god. Or maybe he was in the army. But I remember like just thinking like, oh, he's he's kind of a badass. Um, because he okay. told me that he dropped like twenty kilos or something of weight when and it was like all muscle weight, and so he's kind of thinned out a lot. Yeah. Because you know, he doesn't really he doesn't really eat much generally speaking. He just kind of like plays games all day. Um, but he told me he used to be like super fit and ripped because either he was. I, I really think it was. Probably he used to train to fight, but I I I I, I don't remember exactly right okay. now. Okay, I would have never guessed though. I, I believe you. I believe everything you say for it. Actually, I think it's the military. I, I'm gonna go with that one. So okay. Right. Okay. Are you sure you want to change up your story again? Uh, yeah, I think he used to fight. <laughs> no, he was in the military. Okay. No, he's in the military. All right, all right, perfect. So um, we're just waiting for uh, games to load here, and um, yeah, whoever wins the next game is gonna bring back the momentum on their team side. I think momentum um, is like really important, right? Uh, last series we saw that Oskaka just kept on losing game after game after game after being so close to just a match point. I think it's uh, very stressful to be in, put in that spot, right? When you're the only person left on the team to advance. Yeah, sure. Um, but he stayed relatively calm. You know, I think he was able to process all the goods and the bads of what happened. Uh, Druid is not ex exactly the strongest class, but Mm -hmm. It's for conquest when you have so many chances. It's it's actually one of the best decks in terms of being able to handle <clears throat> the pressure of uh, winning a game out of six. All right, so we have Frozen Ice versus Nyria. This is Hunter versus Mage. Um, I guess you guys didn't really have much ideas on these guys for art. <laughs> well. Yep. I no for the art. I gave my artist a list of things, and uh, he can use them if they if he wants, and he doesn't have to use them all, and he can come up with his own stuff. So uh, this is what we came up with, and um, I think it's pretty cool. I think Frozen Ice has a very pastel-y look to his art. Well, it's very accurate to how he actually looks, and Nyria, it it kind of looks like him. I would say that that type of art would belong in our animated series. It's like, okay. Oh. All right. Now that you tell me, maybe I can kind of see right. it. Would you, would you want the connection? Maybe you can like work something out afterwards? 
Uh, I think we're set. I think we're set. Okay, we're good. We're, we're good. We're, we're we're waiting for like you know the next six months to release our second episode. So. Oh wow, six months we wait that long. Damn. <laughs> It's just okay. an exaggeration, because okay, okay. Everything. Well, all things considered, I think um, if this is Freeze Mage, I think Frozen Eyes has a generally a pretty good time. But if it's Face mm -hmm. Hunter, I think Face Hunter still struggles against the Freeze Mage, considering that you can't really push heavy amounts of damage in the mid game without going through Ice Barrier. Versus the the mid range Hunter has like a lot of explosive power that um, can really push the Freeze Mage to the limits. Now, I'm not sure if it's Freeze Mage though. Good. Yeah, yeah. Now that we talk about more about it, I just think Freeze Mage is so powerful, right? I think the most powerful decks in Hearthstone are the decks that usually do really, really well, or the decks that just kill themselves, right? We see patrons usually like just kill themselves if they don't draw a weapon, they don't draw a cycle, and Freeze Mage just just kill themselves when they draw every secret. And yesterday we have a broadcast where Dog actually um, drew a secret off the accolade. And then the scientist died, and then he, the scientist got nothing, which was very unfortunate. <clears throat> so. Followed by drawing his his last scientist when there was no other secrets to be. Oh man, that's even. <laughs> it was like the worst the three sequence of plays slash draws that could have happened. Mm -hmm. It was very so, funny. So that's how you lose as one of those decks. I mean, that it's really going far fetched. Yeah. So freeze I mage agree. is a very good deck to bring. I think if you draw the correlation between these decks, maybe it doesn't exactly mean it, but. The one thing that those decks have in common is that they're really good at drawing and handling <laughs> almost any situation. Okay. And Freeze Mage is super consistent because it draws a lot. Um, it, it has insane draws, actually. If you think about it, Loot Hoarders, Acolytes, uh, Mad Scientist is a type of draw, Arcane Intellects. Actually, course, you might be, be onto something. Done. Yeah. All the so-called um, lower tier decks, they don't draw a lot, right? Like Priest doesn't draw a lot. Except for just uh, the cleric, right? The North Shark cleric. And mm -hmm. the I guess Temple Mage doesn't really draw much either. Or at least it doesn't want to. So yeah. Shaman. To Shaman, yeah, exactly. That's a good, very good example, actually. Well, this is looking like a hybrid hunter. It's got Arcane Golem and Savannah High Main. Right. And, oh, good thing he has a scientist to deal with the scientist. Playing a knife driller into scientist definitely does not feel good at all. And I'd say that Nairia is actually in a very comfortable spot. I mean, he has a secret right now. He has Straw with Accolade and uh, Arcane Intellect. And Frozen Ice doesn't seem like he's... Okay, well, he has an Animal Companion now. But before, he didn't actually have a lot of pressure on the board. And actually, Leok is not that much pressure at all either. Yeah, it's very minor. Um, considering that you have time to draw here. Nairia mm -hmm. can set up uh, uh, Arcane Intellect. Also, a really nice thing too is that that's Ice Barrier that's already weeded out. A lot of cases, you don't really want the ice block as early on because it gives you less flexibility with your cards if you need to play them. Um, not to mention the ice barrier allows you to get more health, so that way you can push, you can leverage that as opposed to like, oh, I just won't die next turn. Yep, it's just all a stall game, and I actually kind of want to see a uh, doomsayer last turn from Naria, um, just to just you know keep uh, frozen ice's. Uh, Tempo going from establishing too far, really. Just the momentum is a bit too powerful. And like, as a freeze mage, you just basically want to stall the turn anyways. The later you play a Doomsayer, is the, the later they have more answers to it, really. You know, quick shots, owls, and whatnot. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, w I wouldn't have minded that. Well, like, like, if you played Doomsayer cards. last turn, you could have played Acolyte, and then your next turn could be ping the Acolyte and Arcane Intellect. So you could still have filled your curve. So, like, at this turn, like, what do you do here? Um, you don't really want to play a Doomsayer that just dies. Do yeah, you can also consider Fireballing Leoc or oh. just playing Acolyte to draw cards. And, like, the thing is, he'll probably want to attack into the Acolyte somehow, and it gains life and draws a card. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I now that... We've seen everything play out the way it has. I think you're absolutely right, Amaz. I think the Doomsayer last turn might have been better. Yeah. I mean, I don't claim to be like a Freeze Mage expert or whatnot, but I think that was a very good Doomsayer into a Leoc. It's just that it's very hard to kill a Doomsayer uh, without, say, Kill Command. And if you, if you Kill Commands the Doomsayer with the Leoc attack, then he's not establishing anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Knife Jogger is the bigger threat. Leoc just kind of sits there as additional hero power, for lack of a better comparison. Exactly. And here, you don't want to play Arcane Gong too fast. You don't want the Freeze Mage to get more mana, obviously. Yeah. So, um, go. 
and go ahead and hit it. Oh, he might He's considering keeping the charge. Okay, yeah, I, I do like attacking more because like one of you draw another bow. You, you really need to use the first bow up quicker. All right. Well, the Emperor Thorson with a hand like this is that good at all? I mean, generally Emperor is just high value, but mm -hmm. are these the cards you kind of want to reduce, or would you rather have other things? I think Emperor is actually a pretty good card in this uh, in this matchup because the hunter is kind of pressured into killing it, and if they don't kill it, it activates again. So mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Now uh, Naria finally plays the Doomsayer on a, on this kind of board, right? Which is perfect. Uh, once again, it's very hard for. Uh, for Frozen Ice to deal with, so he can't just play Savannah Hyman, ignore this Doomsayer, and disrupts his turn really well. But what's the best way of clearing this? Uh, well, the most damage efficient way is to use Arcane Golem, because then mm -hmm. it becomes a 5 2 and you kill off the Doomsayer. But I'm trying to calculate if you can do some like cute do uh, Glaive Zooka plays and remove it that way. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> No, I don't think so either. Seems yep. like it's Arcane Golem time. You give him seven mana as opposed to six. Uh, uh, that makes it Flame Strike range, but nothing else really comes at seven mana. I guess Antonitis, but the most important thing is protecting this board here. Oh wow, playing the Unleash as well, just to put the extra creature on the board. I guess that's well. Reasonable. How much damage is Unleash gonna really get normally? Not really. Yeah, that's much. true. That's true. It also plays better into Quick Shot when you get that card out of your hand. Oh man! Yep. The second Doomsayer comes into the hand here. Yeah, that's a, that's really nice. With the Doom, with the Frost Nova that he just got, that's excellent. Yeah, I guess you is just do a Doomsayer freeze. What to do? Yeah, you to also. Do could just play one of your more expensive ones and try to like sequence it because it is cheaper mana to do a doomsayer frost nova but it's more expensive to do a blizzard oh yeah that's right that's true yeah you, you do want to get out of your expensive cards first so actually with that line of thinking blizzard might be better you can always play doomsayer and frost nova the thing about frost nova doomsayer too is it doesn't give you enough mana to do anything else next turn you can frost nova doomsayer and play ice block and then you know, if it pops, you can play Emperor Thorson. This allows you to get an immediate Thorson value next turn, assuming this doesn't. This, assuming this Doomsayer pops. Now, would you play a high range just so you can get the two, the twos out there? Uh, or would you with just this hand, now you have Glaive Zookas. I guess so. Like, what can you Glaive Zooka really? Um, yeah, I guess you just play. Well, high you Glaive Zooka so you can Glaive Zooka gets you the weapon hits too. You have you have to do this over four turns. Right, but you're not really mm. looking for damage right now. You still need some more minion damage before you can go for phase, like with kill commands and whatnot. So, uh, and if you play Gilead you can't really play Savannah High Main. Yeah, yeah just six that. mana, two, two twos. That's a shame. That is a shame. At least for the, the Hunter player. For Nyria, you're, you're like feeling pretty You're pretty happy good about, about that. It. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. of course. So here with eight mana, um, Feels like a pretty safe turn to Emperor. Absolutely. I think this is a really good opportunity to put pressure back onto the Hunter to deal with it. And it's just gaining more life because Emperor will no longer be on that board after this turn. And you get some pretty cheap cards that are really effective. Uh, the fact that Antonidas is cheaper is big. The fact that um, Ice Block is cheaper is also big. Like these type of things where you allow you to really squeeze in some plays that allow Freeze Mage to come back into this game, which looks like it's on the verge of doing. Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about before, where the Emperor is just too much of a threat that you have to kill it. Uh, even oh. with the Freezing Trap up, it's just like sitting there, reducing all the mana costs. So I think Emperor is a very good card in this matchup. I'm, I'm actually really intrigued because... I wonder if there's going to be an opportunity for Freeze Mage just to kill Hunter by straight up damage because he has cheap Antonitis and he's got Pyroblast in hand. So if he can keep oh, yeah. that, like he, I mean, eventually he can just kill him with just damage, right? <laughs> Wait, the thing is, like, if you Antonitis and Ice Block here and he can't pop your block, you actually win the game with Double Fireball and a Pyroblast. Then that's enough. Mm -hmm. And of course, Hunters don't run healing. Why would you run healing when you have to run more damage, right? 
So that right. might be a play if Nairia thinks he doesn't die next turn. Yeah, it's pretty hard it's, to die. It's, it's pretty right. ambitious, though. If his, his opponent has a kill command... He still needs something more. Right? Yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Maybe Nairia just feels like he has it. He's going to be keeping those cards for so long. It's actually a Glazooka that he can't play. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just going to go with the safe play here. Blizzard it is. And what trap is that? Business. The Why trap is uh, freezing, freezing trap, trap, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, Hearthstone helps. Uh, well, Hunter has better start working on that health count, but the problem is leaving up some of these minions too. There are, wow, there's no way to deny this accolade from drawing two cards. Not really, but I guess Nariya is just looking to kill now. Right? He has enough damage in his hand. Yeah, this has definitely slowed down way too much. Hunter is not able to utilize chargers. Frozen Ice looks really stressed based off what's going on here. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard matchup anyway, so you don't need to be too devastated when you can't really, you know... Uh, maneuver around this. It's just that Freeze Mage has so many, uh, so many tools to help deal with a hunter. You know, Ice Bear just slows down everything. Ice up, uh, well, Frost Nova and basically Doomsayer is another, another Ice Barrier because they just slow it down anyways. So effectively, Freeze Mage is like at a uh, hundred health, if you may. A hundred health? Something like that. Right. Every time you health. freeze, your minions can't attack for six. I, I, I want you, you know. to think about th that. A hundred health, Amaz. A hundred health, yeah. Like, mm, you freeze your opponent for ten turns, and each turn is freezing for six damage at least, right? So that's a hundred. I think. <laughs> Did we establish we'll, we'll that we're bad We'll at round math. to the nearest hundred and say you're right. <laughs> we established that we're bad at math, so I think that's perfectly justifiable. I think we've also established that Hunter's screwed. I don't think you can really do much... Um, you can even get away with playing Ice Block and Ice Lancing the high main, right? Oh, you can do whatever you want. I think uh, Ice Block and Ice Lance would be the safest. But uh, no, not everyone just wants to go in there. Well, Fireball nope. puts him down to 16, and assuming he doesn't have a second Freezing Trap, you can lethal him next turn. Ice Block is the safest because you set up a way to not die and then you freeze the high main. Right, freezing the high main seems pretty good. And now, I guess Nairia only dies to something like a Flare Kazan Mystic, something weird like that. Kazan Mystic would be really sick. Okay. Um, five. <laughs> I guess you play everything. Seven, nine, eleven, twelve yeah. damage. Twelve maximum damage this turn. Yeah, oh, and also. To, oh, he kills the Athenaeus, okay. He already has the damage to kill you. You already saw him get two extra fireballs. Yeah, I guess. But then, uh, I guess Frozen Ice doesn't know that, right? His hand might just be all utility spells. So. Yeah, that's true. And that also tells you that Frozen Ice is not running those Flare and Kazan Mystic cards. Nah, you might as well I would be really it. surprised if he ran Kazan Mystic in the Hybrid Hunter, but... It sounds like um, people who struggle on ladder would do. They like take the deck. They're like, ah, I hate losing to <laughs> to other hunters. You know, even sure. though I'm playing a hunter, I'm gonna go ahead and play Kazan Mystic. It's like, no, I don't think I the don't think best counter to Kazan Mystic is Kazan Mystic. So that might be a thing. Yeah, I guess so. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, this is gonna wrap up the game. Um, unless Lotheb comes and stalls for one more turn, Lotheb's also a possibility. No, that's not Lothab. But, uh, that is really far from Lothab. So that's going to wrap up the game, and that means Team Liquid takes a 2-1 lead. And Frozen Ice loses his first game here as the Hunter, and they got some pretty valuable information again. Being able to see that uh, what kind of Hunter it is, what things that they play around. Yeah, and information is all very, very important in this Team League format. I think making sure that Freeze Mage win its first game is also good. Um, well played. Just because of the the easiness of countering Freeze Mage, if you know it's Freeze Mage, and cornering it. But generally speaking, there's very few matchups that can corner Freeze Mage the way like Druid and Control Warrior can. So, Well done, Team Liquid. They're up 2-1. We've still got a long way to finish this best of 11. Mm -hmm. So pick up your heads, all fans of Team Celestial.
still a lot of uh, you know matches to get through. And actually, there is um, there is a lot of Chinese people uh, you know tuning into the stream right now and really rooting for Team Celestial. I guess this is their only representative, right? I mean, for Americas, we have so many teams in the Americas. We also have a couple of uh, EU teams, right? I mean, I guess Liquid is kind of based in EU. Uh, Temple Storm, in a sense, kind of, right? With Gara, but mostly American, I guess. It's so, yeah, a primarily American team. Gara's yeah, are only primary. European, I think. Right. And Nihilum, of course, is also uh, an EU-based team. So the only team that uh, Chinese people can root for is Team Celestial. So they got a pretty big oh, following. They can root for LOE. She's also Chinese. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Playing all sides there, right, Temple Storm? Yeah, you know, we're all things to all people. That's that's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not our intent, but that's what ended up happening. That's good. Um, so I think looking at uh, the lineups there, I'm still really intrigued by the Shaman from um, Silent Storm. I'm not sure what he, what he's exactly planning. I know a few players have really picked up some interest with mid-range Shaman. You know, Hawkeye doing well with it in DreamHack has really invigorated some people to maybe look at the class again and see if they can bring it in. And if you're bringing six out of nine classes, I mean, that's almost you know, no reason not to bring one of the underplayed classes and see if you can surprise people a little bit. Um, That's true. Unfortunately for Conquest, uh, it is this. It's a kind of format where it really punishes specialized deck building because um, you don't know. You don't have the guarantee to actually have that deck do well. And if it loses that, you're gonna lose. You're gonna weaken your other matchups across the board. So you need to bring an overall more solid deck as opposed to like a really wonky like anti hunter with two Kazan Mystics and you know all the heal bots that you can get. Yeah, I mean, we kind of, I kind of learned that lesson, again, the hard way with the Temple Mage. It's just that every, every deck needs to win at least once, and you really need to remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. Bringing Shaman also says that, uh, you know, I'm not preferring the other three classes. So what is this? Uh, Paladin, Priest, and... Uh, uh, Shaman. What's missing? And Paladin, Priest, no. and Shaman. Those are the three. No, no, no Paladin, Priest, and what's missing from, I mean, Celestial's lineup? Oh, uh, uh, mage. Mage, yeah. So they basically yeah. t said that oh, uh, shaman is better than mage right now with the shaman pick, right? Yes, or none of us like playing mage. Oh yeah, that too. I guess maybe yes. there's just too many secrets floating around in the mm -hmm. Asian scene that you know I don't want to lose the Kazan mystic all the time, so only running uh, for example, one secret class. Uh, might yeah, pay off for that, them, but then mm, <clears throat> maybe not. That's like a something that works both in favor and against Celestial because they have the Asian metagame to surprise people with, but they also have less to understand and adapt to um, compared to the West. That's why they're such an interesting team to me in this league because they legitimately might be able to bring decks that were like, whoa, that's, that's kind of weird. Um, the Asian scene was the first to really try to put Grand Patron Warrior on the map. Uh, with guys like Fu Oliver, they were really putting in Patron very close to the iteration that people use now. And mm -hmm. that was like a week after release. So I think people really underestimate the Chinese region if they don't really watch much of their streams or their, their tournaments. In terms of their deck building, they really try to get creative. Um, the problem with the Chinese deck building is that they're very creative, but oftentimes they're not refined and optimized. So I'm, I, I don't know if they're going to bring anything really unique and different here. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not, but I'm leaning towards them to still be the ones to surprise the rest of the people here. Yeah, I think they're the ones to do it too. And with the creativeness, you need to kind of uh, have a good balance. Uh, after you have a creative deck, you need to kind of refine it. Mm. So you're going to have to play a lot uh, before jumping on, oh, I want to play something else now. You know, I want to yeah. find out the next big thing. So uh, yeah, it's, that, yeah. That, that does make sense to me. Creativeness, yeah, I like that. Um, mm. the, the fact that Frozen Ice is going to queue up here again with the Hunter... Oh, looks like uh, I have to requeue here. Um, the <laughs> yep. fact that he's going to queue up again here means that if he loses, he's going to get benched. Oh, man. Being benched being is such benched, a big setback. Yeah, it's a really big disadvantage considering that you then you can shut out those two classes from the selection screen and you can corner some decks. Yeah. But also with the bench rule, uh, what's cool is you can safely assume that the other team is not going to queue the same person twice. And with that knowledge, kind of, assumption, um, you can kind of eliminate some deck choices already. So sometimes queuing yeah. twice gives you an extra advantage. Wait, wait, wait. Really? 
do you, do you get what I mean? Wait, wait, so you're saying that if you assume teams are going to play it safe and not queue up twice, you can also... You can also eliminate that's, that's, it. That's, so that's for, really like second level mind games. And the third level yeah, is yeah. anticipating that and then doing nothing. And then the fourth right. level is reading that and doing something. <laughs> oh man, lots of uh, you, get, you, levels. Get, you get what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah eventually I get it. you realize, oh, I'm just confusing myself. Screw okay, it. Okay, but yeah, it's always that cycle, right? But the motivation yeah. for the ventral is for not one person to just show up in the tournament and just lose six games without any other player having a chance to at least play a game. So with the ventral in place, everybody will at least play one game. So uh, you don't show up and do nothing. That sucks if you show up and do nothing. Well, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if that ends up being the case. Um, Nyria is going to go ahead and queue up again too. So... We have Rogue versus Hunter. And I always get a lot of divisive opinions about this. Primarily from your teammate, actually, Amaz. Oh, um, who? Every time I always talk about Hunter versus Rogue, right. Firebat always tells me how much he thinks Rogue is fine in this matchup. But I talk about this with other players. Everyone thinks the Hunter is really good against the Rogue. So what Wait, do you, you mean? You mean generally or against a certain No, against because... like a ag more aggressive... Yeah, yeah, aggressive does. version, right? I think yeah. aggro hunter or face hunter is uh, way the favorite against the rogue because the rogue needs those specific specific cards to counter that, like vile teacher and preparation and stuff like that. Maybe in the fan of knives, and if they actually don't find them, they're pretty well. They're just dead. All the aggression, uh, all the minions that they can't remove, or they remove with the face. You know, taking double damage from a wolf fighter is pretty much dead. You're pretty much dead at that point. So I think it's a it's a uh, it's a hunter favorite. Okay. Well, slow start again outside this abusive sergeant. It is still two damage mm -hmm. if the rogue ends up using the hero power to eliminate it. And most importantly, I think you're gonna be you're gonna be aiming for the coin shredder plays on turn three and four, right? That's that's pretty much the, the money spot you're gonna try to find with this deck or this hand. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the bow is really, really strong though. It does clear three threes. So if you do go with Corn Shredder, then you have to skip out on the bow, which pretty much Frozen Ice will have to because Nariya is looking like he's going to play like a Forest here next turn. Yeah, looking so, like... Oh, well, he also did pick up the Arcane Goal, and that is double three drops. But that is the most awkward double three drops I've ever seen. Yeah, giving mana to Rogue is not what you necessarily want to do. You give it opportunity to play bigger tempo uh, swings. So I think that's definitely the right call here. Hero mm -hmm. power. So here's the hard decision. Do you bow or do you shredder? Because if you shredder, you get uh, you get punished by sap too much. And if you bow, you don't yeah. establish anything. Yeah, Violet Teacher prep sap. It is the way you... Well, you're, you're basically making the game oh. much more difficult than you had to. And Violet Teacher exactly. off the top is excellent. Yeah. Check that out. The Violet Teacher is the card that you want against Hunters. So good against so many cards. Like, exactly, the Freezing Trap, right? If you want to Freezing Trap a 1-1, uh, that's really, really bad. So, I'm going to try and forward that. So, I think uh, Nairia is actually ahead in this match. Yep. The Hunter started too slow. The, the whole purpose of Hybrid Hunter is that you're supposed to, ha you're supposed to retain the aggressiveness of the uh, face hunter while being able to maintain other opportunities to board control like the hybrid and push into the mid and late stages of the game and fortunately he hasn't gotten that early aggression in fact he's really on the defensive foot here yep just gotta clear those minions a high main might help but once again you always fear the sap six mana doing nothing is not really a good turn so here maybe a uh, mixture of hmm I mean, Unleash the Hounds does clear the board, but do you like that at all? No, I don't like it because it's too reactive. You don't get to develop much else outside of that three mana. You lose okay. almost everything except the Pilot Shredder. Yeah, I guess you can actually hit with the bow first on the Vile Teacher, use Unleash, and then hope the Glazuka can buff one of the Hounds. So you're left with one Hound and whatever Shredder pops out. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, because the thing with rogues play. is that if they have a minion on the board, they become so dangerous. But if you keep on clearing their minions, they can't like oil their minion and burst you down for a lot. And yeah. usually that's a game plan against rogues anyways, right? Warrior against rogue, you want to ask every single one of the creatures. I'm not going with the freezing trap instead. Oh, I was going to try and freeze the, uh, the drake here. This stealth guy is pretty nice actually. Okay. Yeah, Given Stalker makes it 
invulnerable against backstabs, um, <laughs> SIS7 agents. Yeah, this has been the game of top decks. Like every time we mention the card, it just pops out. Yeah. So, Which is well, good, then right? Because we kind of know what we're talking about. Well, it's like you, you, always, you always can talk about these hypotheticals. Like this is what they might be playing around. And then when they actually draw, it's like, oh, well, it works out to be the right play and, or the right scenario in that case. Yeah. Because if players don't know the cards, then we kind of want to put ourselves into their positions. You don't mind tossing back cards like Heal by Lotheb. So you can take your time camping this freezing trap, I think, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, get, getting back an anti kill, but that's huge. And there's a way to deal with this high main rather effortlessly because of the blade flurry spell power and the backstab spell power with SI7 agent. Um, in fact, if this Cable and Stalker attacks face, that's a full board clear. Although, the, <clears throat> hey, yeah, it's a full board clear and you don't even have to pop the freezing trap. No, not really. But I think f what Frozen Ice is thinking about is once again the rogue minion thing, right? He kind of wants to kill the Lotep here. That's what I think. Yeah. Or maybe even killing the Asterisk. Oh, man. It's the quite spell tough. power is really threatening. Because yeah. now Eviscerate, Fan of Knives, you know, that, that, gives, that kills off the, the high main. Well, he needs to choose something fast. The rope is burning out. The thing about either of these five drops getting pounds back, they can also just be replayed immediately. Yep, and it seems like that uh, he agrees that the spell power might be a bit too dangerous here. Another heal for Naria. He is looking really, really nice here. Yeah, perhaps Sprint gives him so many options here. Yep, for, sap uh, is what he's looking for. Mana. Just, just get the sap. No, mm. not quite. Well, he could play the farce here. Mm -hmm. There to squeeze it in and let it bounce back. The high main hitting to the face. Oh. That's probably the, one of the least impactful high main hits to the face I've seen. And he might even consider taking out the farce here instead because he doesn't want that to get bounced back and keep this Lothip frozen. Unless. Unless Nyria wants to bounce it back now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me or um, you turn into the robot just now. Like. Right now. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me rejoin. I'll be right back. Okay. So back in uh, Frozen Ice's turn here, um, just wants to establish the board more and maybe even considering uh, kill commanding a Lothab just to uh, ensure that the freezing trap does more work. He already knows that um, his opponent doesn't have a sap because otherwise his Jaime wouldn't be on the board anymore. So that's exactly what he does. Six to the face. Jaime rule, not exactly the best if your opponent still has a creature, but still pretty good. Now he just wants to look for a board clear here. Um, immediately mousing over the Thalnos, because Thalnos Eviscerate is a clear on the high main. And uh, probably yeah. follow up that with a um, with a backstab on the Shredder, and then Phantom Knives, whatever comes out. That is very strong play. And assuming anything that kind of pops out has two health or left, you should be able to wipe that out too. Yeah. This is probably the game ending thing. Like, there's really not much momentum at all. He's got a heal bot and a farce here to continue to stay above um, HP. And things like Arcane Golem don't have that much inherent value because SI7 agent can easily destroy it. Yeah, it feels like on it, the flip um, side, Vitality Totem can attack. But <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing now, is it? Is that a good thing? I wonder. Well, okay. We finally get to hear what a Vitality Totem says. Have you ever heard a Vitality Totem attack a mod? Uh, it probably no, sounds like a totem, like, like that, you know? That's you hear Siri Totem attack all the time. Like. Now I definitely know you've never heard it. <laughs> no, you know, it's the same sound now as I the Siri Totem, I'm pretty sure. It. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a whooshing sound. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, that, no, that's what I mean, like right? <laughs> That sounds like it's motorboating or something like that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, I did voice acting for clients, um, okay? That's Somebody right. Amaz is in the Taiwanese clan? Yeah, yeah. Someone must You're have liked that. You're in the Taiwanese clan. Mm -hmm. I asked if I could do some voiceovers for the future cards of whatever okay. comes out. No. So. No? Well, Blizzard said maybe. I'll ask, which means no. Okay. Aw. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Does it look like a pretty good blade flurry opportunity while setting up, um, you know, a shield bot? If that's another freezing trap that comes out, then. Oh, wait, no, is that the second freezing trap? Uh, that is the second freezing trap, yes. Okay, it's, so then uh, there's no need to try to play with the. Oh, well, he's gonna. Major have to... damage coming out this turn. Yeah, developing the oiled um, SI seems really, really smart. And uh, here we go, he's going to be a flurry turn. Saving the deadly poison for the second flurry, that's also pretty smart. Or, uh, Nairia can choose to push a little bit more damage here. Do we reduce your opponent down to say, what, uh, 13, is it? Well, you'd be doing 12 damage with this, so you put oh, him down to 9, nine. if you had that yeah. deadly poison. But um, it's 13 uh, this way. 13 yeah, this 13 way. this way. That's what you meant to say, Amon. Right, right, right. Oh, wait, there is another trap, though. Oh. Huh. Wait, I thought you Which said both freezing traps have been Yeah, both played. freezing traps are gone. What is this one? Can we have a mouse over on it? Maybe it's a snake so maybe trap. Maybe a snake trap? Oh, no, no, no. no it's, it's a freezing, freezing trap. Okay. Looks wow. like we got our Brooke game. Brook has the sick hunter player. He has three <laughs> freezing traps in his deck. Uh, I would I play three. That. I would play three, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would he attack? Uh, Glaive Zuka onto this leper gnome? Uh. Nope. Probably not. Yeah. And NTQ bot basically just seals the deal here. Yeah, this team's been a runaway for a while because uh, Rogue just never got put under true amount of pressure. There's just so many effective ways for uh, Nyria to just end the game next turn. Oh. Yeah. And Frozen Ice is going to be benched, Amaz. It is, it is. Yeah, he is going to be benched, so his uh, his class is going to be locked out from being picked. Uh, I was more of wondering that you became a robot again. <laughs> but, uh, oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. And deep heal bot. And uh, no, that's not going to do it. So I think it's uh, it's game over for Frozen Ice here. He has to just uh, wait for his teammates to free him from the prison. And Nairia's through. Nairia's good. He's going to basically 2-0 and uh, leave it up to his teammates to get the win here. And uh, just like that, Freezing Trap is gonna... ...mean that he is lethal with the uh, Blade Flurry. So good job on Team Liquid. Getting a huge advantage over Team Celestial with a 3-1 lead. And we'll see um, what the next matchup brings. With Frozen Ice Bench, um, Team Liquid definitely has a clear picture of what matchups are going to be. So they're definitely going to use that to their advantage. Alright, I'm back in right. Did you miss me? Perfect. Yeah, Sorry, of course I was just I gone for about uh, a minute there. Wow, my cam got really purple. I don't know what happened. It got really pink. It got really... Well, purple on my screen, but I guess pink on your screen. Yeah, Apparently, I'm having a, a big rave party and everyone's invited. Mm -hmm. um, you're invited to a mod if you wanted to come join me. Oh, that's good. I do like, I do like pink parties. <laughs> All right. Well, um, taking a look at the, what's remaining here. Frozen Ice is Benj, which means Shaman, Warrior, and Druid are the only classes uh, available here. And we mm -hmm. know it is Patron Warrior. And uh, we don't know anything else, though. Well, I mean, if there's going to be a Patron Warrior, a Druid, and a Shaman, you pretty much want to play a Warlock, I think. Uh, it just it feels like... Well, I guess it depends on what kind of Warlock that is, right? But it's if a it's zoo a Handlock... It's Zoo I think. Oh, this, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, of course, of course, it's Zoo. So uh, Zoo is not bad against Patron. Zoo is really good against Druid. And Zoo is really good against Shaman. So I think my prediction is going to be Savage Warlock next. Okay. I wouldn't mind um, Show's Patron Warrior here either. Are we Show playing the Patron Warrior? Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, it was Tiddler. Yeah, okay. Show was playing Hunter versus Patron Warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we don't know what Show's playing uh, his Warrior archetype, but we do know Savish Zoo. And just based on that information alone, I think Savish Zoo is going to crush it. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, Hunter or. Uh, rogue to kind of counter that zoo and you really want that zoo to win because you already revealed that information already Okay, yeah, I, I can get behind that for sure. I think I I if Show is playing the Patron War, I think I wouldn't mind bringing it out here too. At worst you had the mirror um, And if you're Celestial, what would you want to bring? 
What bring? What's your best chance overall? Oh man! If you know Savitz uh, brings Zoo, maybe Tiller brings his own warrior. I think yeah. I think Patron against Zoo is the best chance. I think Patron against Zoo. Patron is a favorite, but then overall, I think Zoo is a very good choice for Liquid. So, I yeah, that's that's my prediction. So Patron versus Zoo, and boom, no, not at all. Well, we got one right. Savitz is definitely gonna queue against the Zoo lock, and Sandstorm gonna bring out his mysterious shaman. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. Th I'm probably assuming it's maybe Mech Shaman. I'd be really surprised if uh, he just decided to go crazy Shaman with mid range. But at the same time, that's that's kind of Silent Storm style. He likes he likes blowing people's minds to a certain extent. Maligo um, Shaman. Maligo Shaman. Yeah. Well, Ancestors why, call why not, why not Free shaman. shaman. Have you ever seen that Free uh, Shaman with, with Frost Shock and Frost, frost Shock? Oh my God. Okay. Have you seen that? Because one oh, time I, I was watching it. a stream and then. I think it was Raynad's stream. I was watching it, <laughs> okay. and then his opponent coined out Mad Scientist on Shaman for turn one. What? Yeah. Wait, was, did I miss and something? And then it just kind of said, you know, greetings, friend. And then you just kind of sat there with a Mad Scientist, and we, of course, we were there blinking for like five seconds. <clears throat> okay. And Maybe uh, he, he won. Playing, uh, uh, was he won. The, Undertaker. The, the free Shaman won. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. It was basically really? the, the Mad Scientist was a troll card, but you play Ancestors Call Mali Ghost. But you just play freeze cards, and you just keep freezing the board. But you what have the, frost elementals. Then what the heck was the mad scientist doing there? Just to say that you lost the freeze shaman with mad oh, scientist. Oh man, the pride, man. It's the uh, mad scientist is a victory cigar in that deck. Okay. Uh, well, Savage is gonna start with two one. Is really strong against totems, and looks like Sandstorm oh. is gonna run the um. Oh wow, that shaman. is not the hand I expected to see after a zombie chow actually. So he's still kind of splashing into the mech yeah. variant a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, but it's got to be mid-range. I think it's not even mech. I think that power maze is just solely for board control. I think he's got Alec here and or Neptalon or maybe even both. Okay. It well, I think definitely he definitely has Shredder, right? Definitely Shredder with yeah, the power maze. Yeah, he's got Shredder, uh, Harvest Golems, and maybe even an Anoyotron. But I think those are the only mechs in his deck. Okay. Makes sense. I'd be surprised uh, to see anything else. Yeah, <clears throat> coining a power mace here is so strong because next turn you're going to make a yeti. And uh, zombie chow, well, I actually would have preferred the zombie chow hitting the, uh, the haunted creeper here. Because actually Firebat told me this. Zombie chow's main purpose is to get board control. Um, because hitting the face actually doesn't matter because of death rattle. So um, you might as well, well, you know, gain board control that way. Sure. I can get behind that. All right. Well, it's looking like a pretty good Argus turn for Savage next turn. So Silent Storm will try and clear as much as he can. I guess the best way is to just get a spell power totem, but then at the same time you can you don't develop the Harvest Golem at all. Yeah, the Harvest Golem, unfortunately, it's just the momentum has been stopped by this very awkward Imp Gang boss. The fact that I was going to spawn two one ones if you attack it makes the board a little bit more in favor for your opponent. But you can feel pretty confident. I mean, not many people in this type of zoo are running things like, you know, as commonly direwolf alpha anymore. Um, so true. I think you can benefit a lot more off of um, having a really powerful 4-5 on the board at the moment. Oh, wow. He actually chooses to kill the imp that spawns to make the zombie child 2 health. That's actually a pretty good play. I like it. And now in response... The Argus is going to come down. Creeper is most likely going to kill the Zombie Chow because that's a good value trade. And we're going to see what uh, Sandstorm can do to this. The Earth Shock is looking really, really nice here. Yeah, it's kind of pick what you want to eliminate the Haunted Creepers. Um, or if you get a Spell Power Totem, would you eliminate the Imgang boss? Well, uh, no, right? Because 2 one ones is a little bit more than... Um, one. One, one, one. Okay. Yeah. One, one, one. <laughs> oh, God. So, this is looking like a pretty good opportunity for Silent Storm to potentially stabilize now. A lot of stuff, a lot of funny stuff can happen with Bane of Doom. Yep. Is it Bane of Doom time? Oh, no. Implosion's oh, better. Probably not. Implosion does have synergy with Knife Juggler for oh, six yeah. mana. Hmm. Okay. Well, so I guess Bane of Doom it is. Who's a totem? Doomguard. Is it? Oh, oh it's that's an Illidan. That's a good card. It's a I golden Illidan. 
Oh Man, my I goodness. remember when it came out in DreamHack. That's Illidan is actually a very, very good card. That's really funny. Um, but, and now that Illidan's you know taking the hex over, if yeah. he ends up drawing one of his legitimate threats, Savits will have it uncountered. And there you go. That's one of the legitimate threats. Yeah, Can't really it's pretty take good. This turn. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Well, three is pretty good. Three on the implosion is average, um, but the most important thing is that now it's forcing your opponent to have the answer to knife juggle behind a taunt, which he conveniently does. Fire mm -hmm. elements on the three two. But then uh, we're gonna see some uh, sea giant action. There's a second hex though. There is and a second hex. It's not even about that shaman will be out of removal of hexes, but think about the tempo that what you're gonna be able to it? gain if you have hex and lightning storm next turn. Uh oh, this is a greedy play. This is a very greedy play. No. Very, very greedy. Oh, oh he the you get punished for the greed. That's what happens when you don't play Sea Giant when you can. Oh, man. Well, I guess to Silent, uh, to Savage, it's not really that bad because Sandstorm is holding Hex, right? But still, like you get you get punished a little bit. Oh, man. Yeah, I would play the Sea Giant for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I think Savis is really regretting how that ended up panning out. Now he knows if this is trades into the knife juggler, he so wants to get the attacks in now before it gets lightning stormed away potentially. But I still think you need to charge the face, get the damage in, put Shaman in a really awkward spot. And an awkward spot he is at with this kind of hand. No board clears. Oh, mana size not going to be good enough. Feeling okay. totem. Not bad. It's like, yeah, it's okay. It's not the worst one. But BGH is a very good draw next turn. Uh, so you definitely tap here because you can. You can play everything and then play C Giant as well. So you should tap here first. Well, you should. <laughs> Just so you can have more options. Yeah, generally speaking, you want to draw first mm -hmm. in case something changes. But I don't really think anything changes. Oh, Abusive would be nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. Abusive would be better than maybe the Void Walker. Yeah. But this is fine. You just slam down everything. Sea Giant comes down as well on the field. Sea and Giant for one mana. Goodness that, gracious. That is pretty value. So it's looking for some value trades here. Doesn't seem like he can play everything. So he has to choose. Is he worried about the spell power on the Drake at all? Uh, as a shaman, not really, I guess. But at the same time, I I, I guess you kill it, huh? This is the okay. lightning storm. He's fearing the lightning storm. True. All right. Well, this is the march back. If uh, if you're a silent storm, you got a big game hunter to answer, and you can load up the board with Azure Drake. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here, you kind of want to kill the Void Walker. Because uh, not only does it get buffed by Morganis that we see immediately, is that if you kill the creeper, you're actually not removing any power off the board. It's still two attack. Mm hmm, I was pretty useless. Morganis is not as effective on this board as you might think either. Right, um, but you just saw BGH, right? What's the just, chances of I mean, him having a second hex? Yeah. But he's going to be able to remove it relatively easily. I guess you just you're, you're, it's your best play this turn because if you tap and you get Owl into really nothing else, <laughs> power warming for example, you're basically passing. Yeah, yeah, Morganis is fine here. I mean, based on what Savage's current situation is, we know it's really bad. And oh, that's a that's bit better. better, I guess. That's much better. Realistically, though, that just might force out a second hex from Silent Storm, so that way it doesn't get the the big swing from Morganis. Oh, that would be actually pretty detrimental if he actually uses the Hex here. Hmm. This one is pretty tame. Like, nothing big, nothing too crazy. What about smashing the the Void well, uh, void Caller and Hexing? Hexing whatever comes out? If, yeah. if it ever comes out at all? Yeah, that, that's yeah. a good way to do it. Oh, no, just keeping it around. Well, you can also use Crackle Hex. Oh, just hexing this. Oh, man. Well, that was the play I originally thought because it allowed you to develop the board. But, but then you were talking about how how did you deal with it afterwards. And now that he has Flame Tongue and Crackle, I think he feels comfortable. Oh, with man. 
But the Void Walker is such a big draw right now. That is a 3-5. Yeah, um, but he's got Flame Tongue for him, right? So that should allow him to trade down well. Oh, Alec here as well. Now, oh, it's, yeah, Malganus is dead for sure, right? Mm hmm. In fact, um, Malganus trades just for the Divine Shield and the, the Totem. This is a really good opportunity to swing the game right now. Mm -hmm. And it's so far away. 10 HP feels like 100, to borrow a term from Amaz. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say. It does feel like 100. You have no direct damage outside of, you know, uh, Bane Doom of Doom. guards. So, Bane of Doom yeah, is your okay, only direct damage. Sure. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah, and now you're staring at lethal. Nah, uh, Bane of Doom is going to kill the Azure Drake. Uh Oh, a little bit too late there. Or can you still survive? No. Um, mm. If you silence Alakir, are we? Did you silence Alakir or the totem? Well, he silence Alakir, he can kill the Drake. Yeah, silence Alakir. Totem still is a lot of damage. Uh, you'd have a five five and mm. a six three, so that's uh, eleven. So if he rolls high on the crackle, he loses. Yeah, nice. but at the same time, he's still in a bad spot. He still can't kill your opponent next turn, right? So, hmm, pretty difficult. You just throw down the abusive, right? So many possibilities. Yeah. The abusive and the Drake are actually comparable damage. If you kill off the abusive, it's, you're killing off four damage. And if you kill off the Drake, you kill off four damage. Oh, what he should have done is kill the Shredder for Doom uh, for Doomsayer. That's the winning play. Oh, well, I guess the one in the 64 chance. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, here you're just dying for sure, right? How can you muster up 10 damage in the course of like two cards? You just can't. So I six, guess that was just the best. Six. Six. Oh. Uh, so close. Uh, that's still fine. Next best. Because thing. your opponent can't tap. Yeah, I think the best way was to kill the shred and go for the one in 67 or whatever the number is. The The 1.5%. 1.5%. Now that's still a percentage. Like right now, this is a 0%. Oh, and now he can still, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, 1.5%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he can still do it. <laughs> Here we go. So, he has so to first good. roll three or higher. Oh, that's okay. good. Then has to be Doomsayer. And... Oh, the oh. other troll. Two drop. Okay. Still zero. Or Walker oh. Cho. Oh, Shaman uh, gets the win. And um, once again, very unexpected that. Uh, Shaman is actually undefeated in this league. Yeah, it's 2-0. 100% oh. win rate. 100% win rate. It's because people keep underestimating it, for sure. And what's also more impressive is that this is not a mech shaman. Yesterday, Kibler won with the mech shaman. Right. Um, and now Silent Storm is done for the day. He won yeah. his two games. He detoured. That was he cleaned uh, up. He's going home. Or he is yeah. home, and he's going to go get a sandwich. Uh, or he'll sandwich. ask someone to make a sandwich for him. Okay, I, 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 I might see what you're doing there. Yeah. Maybe. And Tiddler and Frozen Ice have to start pulling their way because they've combined for three losses so far. It's actually so crazy that the team captains are the ones that are dropping their games. Well, not... Oh, wait. Not yesterday, though, right? Yesterday, not the yesterday. team captains yeah. were winning. Yeah, Firebat and Life Coach just won their games immediately. And then uh, yeah. Ecop won his game, too. <laughs> yeah, Ecop won his game, yeah. So, um, I don't know. It feels like this format is really cool because you see who is actually going to breeze through and it's always somebody who's like left behind. Well, because not everybody can win if you're on a losing team, unfortunately. One player oh. will end up being a struggler or ends up losing two or three, maybe even four games if you're Kalento. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> but the series just now, um, it seems like Force and Boys were such in a dominating position. They were so close to getting a 6-0, but Temple Storm did manage to win, what, uh, four games afterwards? So, that was fine. Yeah, and the team captain, Gara, ended up winning his games too. So That's true. Team captains are coming through. Team captains are coming through. Not not in this series, though. Savitz and Tiddler are... They need to pick it up. They're slacking yep. Scrubbing it Still up. waiting for the moment. Okay, not slacking. Mm -hmm. It's just waiting for the moment. And uh, yeah, we'll see what the next game brings. But once again, guys, it's uh, over a couple of weeks. At the end of the end of, end of all the weeks, we're gonna see who does the best. Couple and, of weeks. Um, sorry. 
a couple of weeks. You're giving the impression that we'll be done by the uh, end of July. Guys, we're going to September. It's, 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 it'll go by really fast. I mean, yeah, it's July already, right? It just feels like all the way to was September. Wait, we're what? ready. We actually were close to calling this the fall classic. That's how deep we're going into the, the season, man. Well, yeah, very close, very close. But uh, <laughs> as we, I think, the, I don't think we explained the advantage yet. Uh, the first uh, placement for this round robin phase actually gets to pick who they play against in the live finale. So it's actually quite important to place as high as you can. Like um, every place kind of matters. Sure, uh, fourth and fifth are kind of the same and sixth and seventh kind of the same, but uh, it gives more incentive for players and teams to do well over the whole course of the league. Yep, that's right. Uh, you know, there really aren't many losers until the <laughs> very last week. And then okay. all of a sudden there's a lot of losers. And uh, then we have the top four, and then we finally get one really rich team, one kind of rich team, and then the rest to, uh, you know, wallow in their sorrows for not <laughs> being able to win the best. There's a lot of money on the line, man. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars prize pool, and uh, I believe a hundred to the winner. So this is a lot of money that's going to be distributed. Um, but we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, uh, these teams, the team captains, are going to face off. Oh man, Druid versus Druid. Oh man, the classic matchup of who draws Wild Growth and Innervate as well. And like you said previously in the previous series, uh, I of course used previously twice there, uh, whoever draws Innervate, I think uh, as well, is the favorite. Because you just want to establish the first minion. And the person who does that is always ahead, because Druids usually play one minion a turn, or remove one minion per turn. Yeah. They can't do both at the same time. The only card that does that is Keeper of the Grove. There is um, another way to differentiate players. I know some people, they, they facetiously say, like, whoever draws the better cards is the better player. Right. But um, there are some scenarios where you can see the better Druid players um, really push the window of when to be aggressive versus when to go for the trades and be defensive. And sure. I think I mean, a lot of um, mid-tier players who don't, who don't maximize their win percentages over trade and um, they, they, they can't read the situation as clearly as some of the best players. That's, that's the small differences that end up giving them the win sometimes, which ultimately make the biggest difference. Yeah, okay, I, I agree with that, because there are a couple of situations where do I reveal the shade or, or do I don't, right? Do I go for the mm -hmm. face or do I go for the value trade? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. But I guess it's more apparent when both druids have wild growth or innovate or both druids do not have those cards those are sure. the exciting games in my opinion because sometimes those cards just really give you such a huge advantage that sometimes a mistake or two would not cost you the game but yeah you do want to win those 20 percent of the games where both druids do not draw anything right it is 20 percent i mean okay. i'm just throwing a random number out there gotcha <laughs> the, the the, the game that happens every so often. Is this one of those right. games? Yeah, I think we not, see a wild growth sir. into double we five drops. We see a wild growth, but we see nothing on Tiddler's side. Well, not yet, at least. Uh, I, well, so just, just this hand is amazing. You got double five drops next two turns. And uh, Tiddler just here part of turn two, so we know that Tiddler does not have a wild growth. Uh, but does he have an innervate? No, he has a shade. No. Shade is good too. Yeah. Shade is still something because now you're taking initiative onto the board, even though it does kind of stink that you're not able to take the, the mana tempo back in your favor. All right. And I think the worst case scenario too is when your opponent's going first and he gets a wild growth off and you can't really punish with a follow up play because then he's two mana ahead. And. Uh, it's like when you're playing Ancient of Lore and you're like deciding if you should play Azure Drake, it's like, oh, well, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do here um, in that scenario. So mm -hmm. I, I really like that uh, Tiller is at least still able to play a three job because that keeps him competitive in this game. That's true. Um, so right now, we don't really see Tiddler's, uh cards because he forgot to invite us. Um, so hopefully, oh, he'll get right on that. It was bad, man. Yeah, it feels <laughs> it was bad, bad. Man. So yeah, once again, uh, Druids can only usually remove one creature or develop one creature. And Tiddler actually mm, used two cards to kill one card, so Savage is looking really pretty here. Yeah, what do you think about that using Swipe? Maybe his hand is developed to the point where he can't afford to play Swipe any other turns from now, so he needs to Swipe now so his curve can be respected and he can deal with that Druid the Claw. That's, that's uh, my I, That 
Uh, you could say that, and you could also say that he does have a shredder. Like the only thing he has in his hand is just uh, a swipe for four. Yeah, sure. I mean, you could also yeah. I mean, I mean that's what ultimately you can say about it because swipe in this matchup is not very powerful outside of just drakes and and shredders themselves. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually would rather keep Wrath sometimes if I had to choose between, even though they're comparable damage, because okay. uh, the swipe is really clunky versus the, uh, the the Wrath is more versatile. Although it does help you draw cards sometimes too. So, yeah, uh, sometimes. taking a look at this hand too, you want to kill off that Lotheb, and you can develop the Shredder, and that's still pretty effective here. What's what's the hesitation on Savita Zen? You think? Actually, I think. Um... Well, I, what I would do in this situation is I would think whether to go face with the Adric or not. I don't really, mm, I'm not really crazy about the Belcher. It just dies for free for the Lothab. But I would have played Shredder and considered just attacking face with the Adric. Because, like, Tiddler is probably going to remove the spell part off your board anyways. So. Oh, yeah. That's also a pretty good consideration. He already yeah. just used Swipe, too. Yeah. Wow. So Vigis play is going to actually give him some profit here because he has a spell power swipe now so that play he just made paid off yep. really really well and he's got a three drop too to follow up on it mm -hmm. i mean tiddler gained back some of that mana he lost through the wild growth but is he able to stabilize enough because this is a lot of damage coming his way and there's a savage war waiting on the other end yeah it's not it's looking pretty difficult but man savage's turn was actually pretty cool the um the belcher actually set up the lothab to die to the swipe and mm -hmm. Tiller played exactly Emperor for five five health. Yeah, so that was a really good way to play a little off curve so you can punish your opponent the following turn. I like that. Yeah, that was really good. Ended All up right. working out really well. Tiller's gonna he's basically struggling to gain back the board here. And uh Well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so there's the Ragnaros play or there's a double shredder play. Or is there a Savage Roar play you can do too? Maybe. I don't like Savage Roar here. Do it. Not, not really. It gives you the Shredder opportunity. It does save the Shade from dying. That's a plus. You could also just double Shredder and just pass, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind the double Shredder play either. It's really sticky. Your opponent can't deal with it. He's already used the Keeper of the Grove. You have Savage Roar, so the more minions you stick give you a higher chance to draw Forest of Nature for the lethal. True. Or the second Savage Roar even. The second Savage Roar even as well. Right, so double Shredder it is. Okay. Back over to Tiddler, we can only guess his cards. Judging the way by uh, he played, it should be pretty clunky, right? Uh, so well... Before. I don't, yeah, I don't think he has an Ancient of Lore. I think he would have developed it last turn, considering that he had the Emperor go off. Um, he would have made cards a lot cheaper. Hmm. He needs to prioritize uh, keeping the body count low, though, because he knows his opponent will have 9 mana. So if he can try to keep as many bodies off, then he'll get the least damage possible. Sure. That's probably a Wrath that was pointed just now. I really can't imagine that being any other card. Second keeper, maybe. Second keeper, eh, maybe actually, but nah. Raf seems more obvious. Ooh, another Druid Claw. So oh, man, your spell. Druid was Druid in a nutshell. Always to that the face. That is aggressive. Okay, and, and nah, that's, that's lethal. That's, <laughs> that's a million damage. Right? Yeah, we ran into the nearest million. It's a million damage. <laughs> I'd like oh, to man. see the Shredders being popped. By the way. Ev per per Drew of the Claw. That'd be awesome. Just to see what comes out. No, nope, Tiller doesn't give him the satisfaction. So this is one of the games where it's kind of decided by the Wild Grove, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which happens. Sometimes you just got to shrug it off. I mean, even in poker, sometimes, you know, the lucky ones, you just let your opponents win or you just win yourselves. But it's the ones that, once again, if both players get really lucky with their ramp cards or if both players get really unlucky with no cards... Uh, that's where the matches get exciting. And this is just a textbook example of uh, a druid kind of drawing better than the other person. Okay. Well, I, I still think that there's some cool moves made by Savid's very subtly that oh, ended that up helping him. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that Belcher so. was a very good play. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree so it's, a, it's not an obvious play. It's not a play that uh, you can say most people would make. They would probably try to favor the easy one. But um, ends up panning out well. And he ends up getting a really important win on the board here. Because now it's 4-2. And more importantly... Um, one of those cases where you force Team Celestial into an awkward spot. If, if Tiddler queues up again and loses, then he's benched and he had to go back to Frozen Ice. Um, and then you can corner his deck as well. So, you know, one of these things of, you know, Team Liquid's in a really good spot. And I'm really feeling like uh, they're in a good spot here to close out. I like their classes here remaining. It's not even... It's not even poor classes. Sometimes you're like, well, I have Paladin remaining if I'm Nihilum. It's like, I have to really hope this Paladin deck can win. Um, right. It's like, well, I have Warlock and Warrior, two of the best classes to bring in a, in a format. But what is Show's Warrior? Do we know yet? Or he hasn't shown it yet, right? He's been practicing a lot of Patron Warrior. There's, you know, actually there's been posts of Show struggling with Patron Warrior, missing lethals, because they're really tricky to find, and he's been practicing it pretty hard. Maybe that disincentivizes him from being able to play it confidently in a tournament. Mm -hmm. He might bring Control Warrior just for stability and comfort. But at the same time, Patron Warrior is just so explosive, especially against this type of lineup where it's great against Druid. Um, well, I may not agree. It's like, it's like better against Druid, and it's not so bad against the other classes here either. Yeah, as long as it's Patron Warrior, then uh, Tiddler's Druid is going to really struggle to find a win. Um, the rest of the decks, I think, could um, are pretty good. But it feels like the Druid, once again, is kind of bullied into not winning a game, right? It's always the Druid that's been last to uh, advance in most of the series from this week. Just from this series and the previous series. Yesterday's series, the Druids actually did fine. Um, oh, it was Patron that was actually struggling. Yeah, yesterday. Patron was the struggle. It was on the struggle bus last. Uh, it's the struggle last bus. It was yeah. That's it was just really it was going uphill. It just couldn't get over the top, and um, needed a little extra push there. And it ended up getting the wins, but Patron Warrior had a very poor win rate, same as Paladin. Um, but today it's different, you know. And I'm I'm looking forward to see which infographic will pop out to see like the win percentages and the class choices and the different tech cards. Mm -hmm. Are deck list lists posted at all, by the way, Mo? Uh Oh, yeah. Uh, deck lists will be posted uh, in teamarcon.com after every week, of course. Uh, just so, so basically, right after this, um, this uh, series, you guys can see all the deck lists. And of course, we will um, put some featured deck lists up and analyze them a little bit more in the uh, deck list section. So you guys can play these decks uh, if you want. No priest, though. If you, find a, if you want to find a good priest list, then you might have to find somebody else. Somewhere else. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, looks like we're getting ready for our next match there. Hopefully, we can get uh, the Tiddler POV uh, next time or whatever player we have from Team right. Celestial. I guess he was just in the zone. As yeah, we when asked you're them, so like, focused, you times. forget about everything. And, of course, they are in busy yeah. mode. So, the only way we can contact them is through Skype. Uh, you know, just send them a Skype message and whatnot. So... Should have sent to them the personalized cell phones, Amaz. Oh, sorry. Personalized Each cell phones player. is what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, by exactly. Pigeon. By the carrier pigeons. Uh, by bird. Actually, that's how we communicate. We, we live in Hogwarts. Oh, man. Well, Sixo does. Did you see his art? He looks like he was... He looks like he actually does belong to, like, Hufflepuff or something like that. Hufflepuff? Can imagine that. No, nah, let's be real. Sixo's a Slytherin. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Okay, okay. I, I can see that. And everyone who knows him would agree. It's a sinister looking face, right? It is. <laughs> it's like, is. No, oh, he he's, he's very, you know, he's also okay. quite pale. He's got like that, uh, you know. Okay, I see. That malevolent stare. I got at you. I got you. And he plays, he plays Face Hunter and Zoo all day on ladder. Come on. That is that Slytherin in a book. That, Come on. You know, I actually think Face Hunter is very respectable in a, in a tournament. Because, like, Players are all good, so they can play against like Face Hunter really well. And sometimes you always have to eke out those last bits of damage. So actually, I respect Face Hunter. Okay, okay, you're entitled it's, to your. It, maybe it's just me. I don't disrespect Face Hunter. I think um, the deck is trickier in a tournament setting than than you think. Uh, but in ladder settings, yeah, I let the disrespect flow. But it's primarily my own salt. I. I just, I get really salty when I lose. Everybody gets a little bit salty. <laughs> it's the degree. Warrior, um, warrior versus Warrior, by the way, coming out here. We're going to see the show Warrior finally out. Is it the Control Warrior? 
we've seen one Control Warrior earlier today where Hyped uh, was bringing it, but unfortunately it was a very quick game. It was a one-sided aggro paladin versus Control Warrior. Didn't really do much. And we know that Tiddler's bring uh, the the Patron Warrior. What do you think if uh, if the if that uh, show is running Control Warrior and Tiddler's running Patron? Uh, I th think the Control Warrior generally is favored, but it's not impossible. Some people would say like, "Oh, Control Warrior wins like ninety ten or something." So I remember someone tossed out some oh, random ninety ten like that, uh, and I was like talking to the rat at ESL, and he was like explaining to me a lot about the nuances of that matchup. And when he described it the way, I, like I agree, I think a lot of people don't play that matchup correctly because they don't see it very often, either on ladder or they don't really practice it much. Um, so if it is Control Warrior versus Patreon, I would give the nod to show. But I would definitely say that Tiddler is still competitive, especially considering that he's put some of the most time in out of anybody playing Patron Warrior. Okay, that's a fair analysis. And of course, we want you guys to tweet out hashtag ATLC if, um, you know, just give what you think about the Warrior matchups, what you think about the whole tournament, some feedback you have. You know, keep communicating to us and uh, we'll improve basically every broadcast. All right, well, it looks like the players might have actually started and we're just trying to get the spectator oh. mode in the way. In the meantime, we can imagine our own warrior versus warrior game. So this is what's going to happen. Okay. I'm going to turn to armor up. What are you going to do, Amaz? You can uh, play as... You okay, can roll. I will turn to... I'll, I'll play a loot hoarder. <laughs> okay, well, I, you played right into my hands. I turned three cool taskmaster, your loot hoarder. Oh, okay, well... Followed up by... I, I think you got me there. <laughs> oh, nice. gosh damn it. Yeah. Oh, you're a good player, Frodan. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I drew that off the top of my deck, by the way. <laughs> oh, you, you don't have to say it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Man, top decking your opponent. Yeah. Sometimes I think top decking is kind of... Hmm, what's that word called? Over-exaggerated, I think. Over Does that make sense? Yeah, something like that. Like, for example, oh, my God, he top decked the BGH. Right? I mean, but then he could have had BGH in the hand anyways, right? But we never, like... Right. It's, um, it's the flashy those. thing to focus on. It's like, oh, well, he yeah, didn't I guess. have it. Yeah, I and guess. he just happened to draw it. Yeah. Um, when he could have had it from the first place, you're absolutely right. People over, like it's because it's more dramatic to feel like, you know, it wasn't the there. Part of the cards. Did you ever oh, watch? Yeah, he was like, I need that card precisely off the top of my deck. You know, friend, the power of friendship. Yeah. You know, power will power. Wow, we have to weave yeah. it there, right? Mm -hmm. that's, but I don't know. I feel like I every time I every day I stream, I feel like I top deck at least like five times. I don't know. It just it just happens a lot. Like it just how the game is kind of like, you know, it, I think it's normal. I don't think it's like lucky or anything. It's just, if it's in your deck. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I feel like, you know, okay. when, you, when you have a BG in your deck, okay. you're going to draw it sometime. So like draw it when they play a giant. Like why draw it like earlier? I don't know. I, I, I feel like um, you wouldn't necessarily pass the LSATs with that logic, but I, okay. I can follow you. I can follow you on that. No, uh, it's the you, intuition. You had me up until I don't think it's lucky. It's like okay. no, it's, it's the intuition, well, I, right? Like, yeah. hmm. Okay, well, here's here's a thing that I can follow up and help support you. Okay. Um, one thing that is for sure is that everyone puts. Everyone also says, look, it's kind of unlucky he drew this. And it's like, well, he put that in the deck for a reason. And okay, like, okay, sure. Some people overemphasize like how some people might get unlucky with how the draws end up panning out, but. It's like, oh, he's playing unlucky as a ramp druid, but it's like, oh, but he put like 15 taunts that are six mana or higher. It's like, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The converse poorly, is you know? true. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, think uh, people overemphasize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the earlier um, games of Hearthstone, um, casters are all, always going, like, oh, he got a curve again. He got perfect curve. Of course he got perfect curve. He's playing Zoo. Like, they run eight one drops back then, right? Of course he's going to get a. What's designed to do the curve? Exactly. You know? <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think people just need to wrap their head around. He did like, exactly what he wanted. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we have armor up, armor up here. Um, mm. Oh, but I like Show's game. hand. I like Show's hand a lot. He's got inner rage on the Grim Patron with a death spite, and um, it's not necessarily about the card draw in the mirror match at all. Um, it's right. a lot about who can grab the early board and control it and never let go. Yeah. It feels like it's really hard to come back from a board full of patrons because that deck doesn't run any board clears. The only board clear is patron, and unfortunately, patrons do not clear patrons. Yes. Moreover, that um, some cards are just really funny because they're so good in your matchups for other decks, and then they're just liabilities elsewhere. 
Um, like Armorsmith, for example. It's one of the key cards to stay alive versus aggro. But in this matchup, it's just, oh, you don't want to see Armorsmith for a really long time. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Armorsmith is the best example. It's just such a good card. I think a better example would be... Yeah, like you like Armorsmith all the time? Yeah, I, 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 oh man. If Priest had Armorsmith, I would play Priest immediately. Priest really needs one of those cards that does that thing. Because, like, remember when you and Rekful talked about Armorsmith and AoEs? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like if okay, you AoE so a board of Armistice, it still does something. It has a death rattle, basically. Okay. Is that, yeah, yeah. And no two drops have death rattles that are like a one four. Okay. All right. When you see it like that, Amaz, you know, I again, not necessarily passing the LSATs, but <laughs> I, I can definitely follow your line of uh your line of play yeah. there. All right. I got you. Thanks, Frodan. You're like supporting me, but then stabbing me is like not really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this grim patron is going to uh, clone itself four times over. Um, you know, maybe we should fork that over to scientists trying to figure out the same. As uh, we'll have four of them, and you only can deal with two. It seems like two. Well, realistically, you only oh, that's a good three. card. <laughs> but realistically, you only need to deal with uh, three, right? Because the five one is kind of like whatever; it's gonna die anyways. Well, the five one was challenging the the Thorson, so that was important for sure. Oh yeah, that's yeah. True. But yeah, you don't want them to propagate, basically. Oh, it's just gonna stop right there. No more patrons, at least, in this hand right now. Yeah, it's okay. He's got a second patron, and now he can play his own Thorson, control the board, and would you would you attack the face with the the other patron at all? Like, is Whoa! The, th the three damage would also allow him to get battle rage value, and I know it might be like, well, you don't want to miss damage. Oh, okay, but... okay. You mean you mean? Uh, but are you trading the emperor? I think I'm just trading the emperor, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, not at all. Show once blood. Now that's a creative play. Hmm, <laughs> I'm very curious by that. I don't think chat agrees that it's a creative play to smork your opponent's face. I don't want it to ignore a minion that usually has super taunt. Like, S that super Thorzen, taunt. Thorzen doesn't just have, like, implied taunt. It's got super taunt on it, usually. <laughs> uh, like, man, like, highest priority elimination. For some reason, when certain okay. cards hit the board of Maz, mm -hmm. there's this weird psychological impact that happens beyond the game. For example, Northshire clerics, Manatide totems, right? Okay, uh, I, I, I get it, I get it. I just and like it, how you use the term implied, uh, what is that called, super taunt or something? Yeah, that was, it's that like, was... I have to kill this with every fiber of my being. Like, I will go through hell and back in order to make sure that this Northshire cleric dies. Like, but, there's some weird reactions that people have to that card. Yeah, yeah but is this justifiable? Because here, Sho got punished for not clearing it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm saying, traditionally, this is what happens, but... In this case, Sho ignored the super taunt and went face. Oh man, you don't want to ignore be the ultimate price. Don't ignore the super taunts. This is the lesson we learned today. Oh, that's that's pretty good. That's well, a got, he, already, he already had a, a war song though that was reduced. Oh, Ash. Oh, damn. Oh yeah. I just yeah. See. Oh, so excited. Okay, never mind. Oh. But now he can squeeze in an armor smith. It seems like he wants to hold on to it just so that. Uh, the reverse patron would not be that deadly, maybe? But yeah, once again here, the armor strip is a liability, like you said. Yes. And show well, I guess maybe he was feeling really confident for this very reason. If you think about it, there's only a few cards anyways in Tiller's hand. So the second the second patron um, effect wasn't nearly as impactful as the, the first one. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he would have went face again with the um, with the game pressure, but he thought otherwise and just cleared yeah. it off. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Tiller is forced to use the um, Gromash here just because there's really not much else to do. And Whoa, is this really gonna go face? face? Oh, just, oh no. Oh, no. okay, okay, okay. We got faked out. We got faked out by spectator client. This happens pretty often. Oh, um, leaves the War Song Commander. Well, I guess both patrons are out already, so yeah. there's not really that much scary stuff. The Frothing Berserker, though, is definitely still scary stuff. Oh, man, the Great. top deck, execute. Okay, I guess top decks are pretty exciting. I, I, I take it back. Yeah, it is pretty flashy. It's like, oh, we needed precisely that card. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think realistically, he still could have killed that Gromash. It just would have costed four cards. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not trade four cards into one card. Yeah. Slam is a decent okay. start, I guess. Yeah, this is a. This might be another big moment too. Show us Harrison Jones. Oh wait, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. He's got a second death bite. But yeah. the Harrison Jones is still really impactful in the drawing a card. Every draw is just another way you can get closer to potentially having your win condition again. Because yep. I think now that Show is out of his grim patrons, he's gonna have to rely on frothing berserkers, and his opponent's at, you know, seventeen health. It's not exactly the most. Yeah. Well, it's still a respectable amount of health, right? Usually after two patron uh, cycles, your opponent's down at like five or six and you just finish with Gromash or something. True story. True story. But this, again, this is looking like... Um, this is looking like a show will be keeping his opponent on a defensive foot if he draws another minion. Because he's now at 12 health. Ugh. Uh, that Harrison really put a dent... Into Tiddler's plans here. And Show's looking a little too close to game. Possibly with a... No. No frothing. Slam oh. though is alright. More than alright. It's pretty good. Ooh. Oh, more draw. Of course. That's exactly what we wanted. Rage Reno. And there you go. Frothing Berserkers. Now that... Hmm. How about this? Would you consider keeping that Frothing Berserker on the board so that way you can get a bigger Frothing on your side to kill? Uh, oh, you laugh, but I'm saying that it could be an extra <laughs> two to three damage. Uh, Plus, you can yeah, hit face this turn. Plus, you can hit face this turn. Okay, okay. Well, I guess we know what you like to play a lot. Yeah, I like. I've downside. played. Okay, Amaz, I played a lot of Patient Warrior in my time too. Okay. okay. Where like, um, I've been in situations where like I'm short one or two damage, and it's because I didn't leave a minion on board sometimes. Okay. You're, Actually, at, you're yeah, at 32 health. You're at 32 health. He yeah, can't okay, kill you. Yeah, okay, I agree with your play too. But, I okay. mean, Frothing is obviously oh, one of those minions where you have to clear, right? It's the Northshire Clare. It's, so. it's true. It's true. I don't really fault um, Show for okay. clearing. Well, hey, look. He also got an Armorsmith, so he would have gained a lot of life. Um, yeah, that probably true. was not the right play in retrospect. Well, is there a, uh, is there a Battle Rage, possibly? Uh, no. Oh, man. No, that's no, such no, no. A just an execute. Wow, with double... With double... Okay. Ghoul? Is this lethal? Um, the problem is he can't pop those ghouls. Aww. Uh, Two Frothing Berserkers, that's... Eight. Oh, that's... That, is that good? Uh, six. Four. Six, twelve. Twelve plus five. Well, twelve plus five. Yeah, twelve Where plus do you five. get the five from? Oh, no, no, you can't whirlwind win because you're missing a mana. Oh, never mind. I have eleven mana in my... Oh, no, 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 you have Armorsmith. You have Armorsmith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can so also you get play, you another two damage. Yeah, you play Warsong, Frothing, But he also Frothing. gains life. He gains life oh, from yeah, Armorsmith. Oh, he gains life. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is, uh, I'm, I don't know. Maybe there's a lethal here that we can't find fast enough. Uh, two, four. And then Whirlwind's um, five times ten. Fourteen. Oh, five, yeah, five plus ten, right? So, yeah, fourteen. Sixteen. Oh, if he executes Armorsmith, does no, that no, change it's, it? You're removing one minion from the board, so it's not quite it. Right. Okay, so you, you reduce it by four damage by doing that. Ah, alright. Well, it doesn't look like he has it. I'm waiting for the post that might show us the way, though. So feel free to, to laugh at us. Uh, I don't think there is... Come on, we have to be confident, Frodan. Alright? You changed your mm, hair color to be right. confident, right? Uh, no, I changed my hair color to impress a girl, but it didn't really work. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't need to know that, though. But now we all do. Oh, uh, and now they can't undo it. Mm -hmm. This is also really dangerous because now that he's, um, put two more patrons on the field, there's, like, a lot of potential for the Frothings to do crazy Oh, wow! Damage. Yeah, it's a reverse, uh... No, he's gonna copy this patron? Oh, no. He, of course you want to copy the patron. Gee, gee. Oh, yeah, but I mean, like, no, in the sense wanna... that... Wait, you want to cool Taskmaster the Ghoul to copy more patrons, right? You can execute the Ghoul to copy the patrons. He doesn't have to toss out... Oh, the... now this is a good copy! Let's do that! <laughs> <laughs> and then he's gonna get killed. No! Oh, man. Oh, man. So bad. So, what normally should look like a board swing, because by all means, this is actually a great play, assuming your opponent doesn't have exactly those four <laughs> out of five cards. 
A frothing, two frothings with horror song and a whirlwind. So you get punished for playing. Oh, oh no! Oh no! So He's not even counting. He's not even counting. He knows. He knows. Oh he's no! There's no way. That's. Oh, that is a million uh, damage. This is a million damage. That's twelve damage per whirlwind. Oh. Tiddler is super bummed. Oh. Wait, no, no, no. It's more damage because you kill off. <laughs> you yeah, kill exactly. Off these things. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, this is just sad. All right, we can um, all oh, take a cup of tea, so and then when we come back, the animation should be about done. That's right. I'm gonna take a quick water step. <laughs> that was just one whirlwind animation. Oh my god. So uh, I think if we can go ahead and just think about uh, the key moments of this game, it has to be that Show is able to draw and control the board um, a little bit better, yep. and ultimately he had. Those small little things that help give him gas, and you know, the Harrison, and Harrison allowed him to draw that second whirlwind and all that other stuff. So, really well. Done. Oh man, one frothing was not enough to kill. It had to be two. Yeah, it was two yeah. frothings. Two frothings. Yeah. Well, wait, remember that cast where players, where the two casters did the water pass? Wait, you have your water here, right? Okay, let's do a cheers. I do. I do. Okay. Ready? Cheers. cheers for we'll, we'll, we'll pour one for the. Oh the shoot! Wrong direction. Okay. What? What are you doing? No, wait, the cheers. Isn't that, didn't you say? Oh, okay. No, no, no just, just, just cheers. Okay, I'm in the right direction. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, cheers. Okay, there you go. See, that was really good. Good queer. Oh, now we drink. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I spilled it all over myself. Well, um, you know, rest in peace, Siddler, because <laughs> you're benched. Oh and man, now frozen Siddler ice is has to come out. Officially benched, so it's gonna be frozen ice versus Savish, and Savish is gonna use a zoo lock. And looking at this. Um, Rogue is okay against Zoo, and Hunter is okay against Zoo, so it's not that bad that Tiller's benched. But sooner or later, Tiller needs to win a game versus Savage's uh, yeah, Zoo. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually. Uh, the, yeah, the big question mark is the Druid. Can the Druid win against the Warlock? Mm -hmm. The other oh, and classes, the thing is they certainly can win against Warlock, though. But the thing is, like, Zoo can always do Zoo stuff, right? They can always just get a win um, out of nowhere. So not only does uh, Celestia need to beat it three times normally, they need to beat it one extra time with the bad matchup. And that's just going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree. And uh, I'm looking forward to see if Tither, Celestial, and crew can go ahead and swing this the opposite way. It's going to be really cool to see a team finally make one epic comeback eventually. It's going to happen one day, Amaz, where one player is up 5-0 on behalf of his team and then loses six sh straight. That okay, would be you think, sick. Okay, you think that's going to go come first, or do you think someone's going to go 0-6 first, where the whole team just loses? Oh, well, 0-6 first, uh, just because that's statistically more likely. But oh, I, think, I, think both would be, I think both would be really fun to see. Mm -hmm. Because... And you get to see like one team get the memes made out of, right? I was really thinking that we were going to call them Temp 06 Storm. Um, <laughs> but then they started winning games and I was like, oh, oh yeah, no, that's, that's less fun. Yeah. yeah. And then you become like this weird, fun, you know, community thing where they can be like, ah, these guys never win. You lost to the team that, you know, you gave them their first win because they're, they're like 0-6 in the league and then you, you give them their first oh. win type thing. Yeah. So. Storylines is definitely what a team league can make, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, absolutely. The, I, I think uh, every team did a pretty good showing in the first week. You know, nobody went particularly bad or particularly good, right? Everybody went okay. So um, yeah, these teams are actually practicing, I, I believe, and uh, actually trying to feel out the format a bit. Maybe in the first week they just went okay. Let's just bring six decks and uh, see whatever happens, right? But I think the uh, the teamwork dynamic is going to start coming in in the later weeks. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, makes sense. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm predicting a Rogue coming out here from, um, from Frozen Ice. I think Rogue is not only the class that Frozen Ice is most familiar with, he famously hit number one in Asia multiple seasons in a row with Miracle Rogue. I think it was like, like three seasons in a row he like hit number one, and I think he finished number one one of those seasons. Um, so I think it's his most comfortable class, and I think it's also the best chance against the zoo, generally speaking. Um, right. I know a lot of people really like Hunter versus zoo, but I feel like uh, Rogue gets a better chance here. 
Iron. Yeah, and of course tiebreakers do count, right? And the tiebreakers are determined on how many games you win overall throughout the round robin. So why not just, you know, make the best out of it and win some games? And of course it also builds up some momentum and some, uh, you know, spirit for the team to go like, ah, we're not over this, this is not over yet, you know, we still have a chance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and you do want to get the, yeah, like you said, win as many games as possible. The tiebreakers is very real. How does how do the tiebreakers even work if um, you're saying like if they're tied for seventh and eighth place, right? Or fourth and third, but, fifth and sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we, can bring the up the, uh, we can bring up the bracket thing again uh, with the standings page. Uh, and then we can see that. Uh, going first and third is actually quite beneficial. Ob- obviously, you want second, right? Uh, you're going to want to go like two for third because first two teams go to that finale immediately. Uh, and of course, the third place uh, winner will get to pick the bracket. So who they want to face against for phase two, which will create some interesting oh. uh, storyline as well, right? So oh. for example, um, you're third and then you go like, yeah, I want to choose what I think is the worst team to face against. Uh, that can create some hype as well. See, everyone's going to say they chose the team they think they match up the best against, but they really mean the worst. So, yeah, that's you're right, Amos. I actually didn't realize how relevant tiebreakers are. There's three breaking points between second, third, five, six, and seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are quite a few. I mean, there's a lot because yeah. there's, four, there's four divisions, effectively. There's the scrubs in number eight, <laughs> there's the. <laughs> just kidding. There's the people who tried but failed. And then oh. there's the people who, like, did. Not so well, but they can redeem themselves and yeah. the six and seven. Okay. And then you have like the people who can still play reasonably well and unfortunately things didn't go their way. And then you have the uh, the people who are, quote, always lucky in first and second. But I, I think this is really starting to shape up pretty well. I really like the team dynamic here. Um, and I, th- I think what's cool is that uh, there is little flexibility with how things pan out. Because um, I know people are always wondering, like, well, if it's eight weeks and some of the teams are traveling for big events, you know, will they always be able to play? And these teams are really making it priority to make sure that this team league happens. Oh, yeah. I do hope that, uh, you know, a quarter million dollars is incentive enough for, you know, people to make it their is games. Amaz. And then I go know? ahead and watch some of the other streams, like the <laughs> cash game yesterday, and someone lost like a quarter million in like five minutes. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. all they do is just sigh. And I'm like, What? That's all you do? It's like, that's our entire year's prize pool at our world championships. And you just threw it away in five minutes. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, Anyways, at that level, yeah. it's basically Monopoly money, right? So Yeah, it's not real. It's, it's, it's the perspective. It, 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 I mean, not perspective, but what's that word called? The reference. The, what's that word? Um, reference? Context? Con- yes, context. Is that that's very smart, Frodan. Oh, oh, man. Thank you. Good job. I guess the first word that came to my head. Yeah, that's good. I'm that glad was you're right. very impressed. Very nice. All right, so uh, Zoo versus Hunter. Here we go. Frozen okay. Nice is using the um, you know, the hybrid-ish Hunter that we've seen before. That's right. That didn't oh, really hybrid advance. Hunter. Hybrid Hunter struggles against Zoo, doesn't it? Because it's um, like it doesn't have the ability to seize the board back as easily, and it doesn't. Uh, or, I don't yeah, know. I, Actually, I'm not sure. I, I guess. Wait, is Face Hunter good against Zoo? In your opinion? Oh, I think so, because I think it can outpace it and do too much damage for Zoo to... Right, Like, sure. for their board control to matter. Because okay. Zoo will eventually wrestle away board control from Face Hunter, but it won't do it in time for it to matter. Usually. Okay, so based on based on what you said there, I think that uh, Face Hunter... Uh, I, I, think made, uh, I mean, Hybrid Hunter has an edge over Zoo. But here, okay. it's actually going to be a little bit of problematic because the Freezing Trap is going to be up. Well, thankfully, there's an Unleash the Hounds to clear off this board really nicely. Yeah, and you can leave the uh, flame in. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, do you really bounce back a flame in? Mm, no, you just taunt it up, I guess, over the next couple turns. Yeah, I mean, if you do bounce back the flame in, you're giving your opponent one and a half free hero powers. That seems pretty. Yeah, it's a really interesting way to think about it. Assuming you're playing it ever again, um, you might just toss it away if you have Doom Guard. But in this scenario, I'm I'm 100 behind you. Mm. In this case, Flame Mim just sats as a mini taunt. Yeah, mini taunt now, right. one thing that you could do is try to bounce back some of these other useful cards like Defender of Argus. 
That's a good plan, but uh, doesn't look like it's uh, that good for Savish right now because Frozen Ice is going to develop another min. Uh, oh my god, and it's a final high main. It's right. going to drop down soon. Alright, so yeah, what exactly do you play here? Well, the, knowing that the freezing trap's up there and you can't really stop it from not mm -hmm. sucking, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's really nothing you can do. I think you just play the biggest minion available to you. And that's Lothab. Yeah. If you play the Wolf Rider, you could be able to clear off the, um, the haunted spiders, the special spiders that come out. Yeah. And then uh, the Argus is still going to get frozen. Uh, well, well, Argus being six mana is still really clunky. Mm, so... Yeah. It's not exactly like the worst thing. It's just that that's really good if Zoo needs to like if they lock down a solid board with void callers and you don't have a way to get past it, and then you know also there's stuff happens where Malganis or Doomguards come out. Argus is really powerful though, but I think this is still okay for the hunter. Yeah. Okay. Well, Voidwalker is definitely not a good card here. It is a freezing. There you go. Is it? And I'm is it better hey. to attack a minion there than the face if you even if you know that it's freezing trap? Uh is it higher it is it more likable? It, it's snake trap. What if it's explosive trap? If it was explosive trap then uh, you feel feel it's pretty silly too, to be honest. Yeah. Oh you pre you feel pretty silly either ways. So <laughs> just pick one, right? right. I mean pick explosive your trap, you wanna nuke <laughs> you wanna nuke your boy for two? No, no, well, that's pretty bad. Oh man, the Void Terror would have been so good with the Power Warming. But, uh, no can do. Yeah, too expensive for, at least at the moment. So do you just eat the spiders here? Yeah, I think he was contemplating if he can also toss in the Owl. Like, if you just make it a 3-2 when you kill off the 2-1, so that way you force an awkward trade. But that weapon does complicate stuff. It makes it kind of irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Well, Leoc here would be actually the best. Right. What's wrong with high main though? If you just drop high main and just get past the void walker normally, you oh, have a five really? five and a six five. Oh, I don't know. I feel like you have so much damage off of playing animal companion and wolf rider, because low them into a void walk void walker is not really what you want to see. I do want to clear off the one one here though. Yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah. I th I think your board is really intimidating at this point. So oh, yeah, I re I retract oh, oh. everything I say. This is a very good play, right? I mean, you can uh, power overwhelming the egg, and then make a very big void terror along with a four four, and then Argus them up next turn. Yeah, set up for Doctor Boom. You force your opponent to trade a little bit down, and then um, let Doctor Boom bring you back. Oh, or, wow. shall so I say, greedy. explode you back into the game? Oh, oh never mind. so greedy though. Hmm. Tapping, Jesus. What does he want to find? Implosion for four. Oh, that was so greedy. Uh, Let's see. Well, he's going to silence the high main here. And what he wants to do is he wants to get the Nerubian egg out first. So that way he can get this, the power overwhelming synergy. But how much damage can he be taking this turn? So 11 from this. So he's 8. So Wolf Rider plus Leoc and Hero Power. Uh, you can't Hero Power. Uh, so Leoc is not quite lethal. You have 8, but down to 1. Oh, no, that's that's good. Huffer is good, right? one damage off lethal. So okay. you don't have to Wolf Rider. You can, okay. Well, no, no, you can no, Wolf no. Rider. You can also uh, Haunted. Oh, wait, he has Argus, right? Yeah. No, no, no. You want to you wanna put your opponent down to one or two in the Hunter's Yeah, case. so you can do the same thing with Hero Power and play Haunted Creeper. Right. Uh, you cannot implosion yourself. <laughs> oh, man. You can't implosion yourself. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I found out the hard way whenever I, you know, well, uh, no, I tried imposing myself one time and I was like, oh, no, the game prevents me from being bad. Okay. You know there was a bug when, um, when GVG was first released and you can Shadow Flame yourself? Oh, that's right! You can Shadow Flame your own hero board to it for zero yeah. damage and die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a little bug there. Yeah, that was really, really funny. It. You yeah, can actually was... Shadow Flame yourself too if you're Jaraxxus and do three damage on the board. Wow. Yeah, because it takes the attack of whatever it is. Well, that's EOE, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's... Um, we'll call it a last resort. Know, resort 
But uh, it was possible. And I think the only way that it could have worked out okay is if you need to get past the taunt to kill his boom bots, to kill your boom bots, to, k- to kill him and tie. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. That's very next level. Yes, that was actually the, the only scenario. I remember someone telling me that. So you I think are it was the Crypt. best Hearthstone player. But you no, just... I, think, I think Crypt just knows too many weird, awkward things. Oh, Crypt scenarios. said it. Oh, man. I think he was telling me that, but mm-hmm. it could have been someone else. Okay, someone was okay. like telling me like, how that would be applicable. Well, here uh, we did see that the hunter did beat the uh, Savage Zoo. So uh, we're going to move on to the next match. Once again, Team Liquid is on match point. So as soon as Savage wins, then uh, they can all go out and celebrate uh, for the first week victory and join the winners of Nihilum. Um, who else won? Uh, Forsen Boys. And who's the other guy? Who's the other team that won? This week? Oh, uh, so sorry. You, you cut out. Um, oh, you're asking about yeah. one so far? So okay, we yeah, had yeah, uh, we'll Force and Boys win today, and then mm-hmm. yesterday we had um, Team Archon go up against Nihilum, which Nihilum was able to Nihilum. take out. Nihilum and then Cloud9, is... yeah, yeah. And then uh, Cloud9 uh, got a really oh, you know, bad set yeah, against Value Town, where Kibler yeah. was able to win those games, and they were able to take that series. So. Yeah. And so far, if I pull out this trusty sheet over me, the only people who got 2-0... Are Firebat, Life Coach, Kibler, Ekop, Forsen, and Silent Storm, and Nyria as well. So these are the only and guys Chucky. who went 2 0. Chucky? Chucky. Yeah. No, Ch- remember. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Chucky. Chucky yeah. Was- Chucky's 2 0 as well. Yeah. And you also said only with like the tone as like we don't oh. have many. And you're like, yeah. only, you know, a third of the league <laughs> ended up going 2 0. And it's like, wow, well, that actually ended up being a lot more. Um, Okay, well, there is one only statistic, mm-hmm. and that's Kalento, who that's right. a single game. Okay, see, now that's, that's the context where you can say only, right? Yeah, yeah. but... It's like, he he only, he's the only player that hasn't won a game. But, but it's bad news. You know, usually, you don't want to focus on the bad news. Well, I think it's an interesting storyline, Particularly mm-hmm. if you juxtapose it with how Kalento normally is a dominant player over a large variance, or sorry, a large sample size, because you're supposed to take like how more games means uh, more chances for the better players to win. So Kalento oh. comes in with like a big reputation, potentially being the best player of the batch, at least if you ask uh, you know the majority of the people watching and playing, mm-hmm. and yet he's the only one without a win. Um, Speaking now there are- of which. Uh, I had to mention this really quickly. The person who actually does the best in the round robin phase um, and actually makes it to the grand finale as well, so the best win percentage, uh, gets a $5,000 extra bounty. So, cool. That's you, should call little, it the, you should just call it MVP award. Whoever would no, no, we it. call it the master of duels, the MOD. Uh, and they also get it. And they also uh, get odds in my channel. You, know? you had that's, so much potential to call it a lot of things. We call it master of duels? Yeah, that's, that that's sounds a like really a good bad story. app in the iTunes store. Oh my! It probably God. is. Hey, hey, iTunes store is pretty amazing. Okay. It is for monetization values on cheap app games like Master of Duels. What? A, no one wants that. T- you should have called them the most valuable MVT, most valuable top decker. Oh. That would have been sick. Uh, okay, okay, let's get to the game here. Uh, Savish is once again carrying up his Zulok. That's the only deck left to win. And Tiddler is going to step up to play with his Warrior deck. It's and we do know it's Patron. Warrior. Yeah, we do know it's Patron. So it's actually a good matchup. Yes. Uh, uh, generally speaking. Now, we have seen awkward draws in Patron in the past. In fact, I, I kind of hope that you guys do some kind of statistical <sighs> breakdown. I don't know if you guys will be doing it or other people who are big fans. You know, this okay, guy sure. just loves doing it, um, loves breaking down stuff. But I really like to see the win percentage of some of these decks because I feel like Grim Patron Warrior has has just been just subpar um, to say the least. Okay. And I, I can't say why exactly. I feel like maybe there's too many unfortunate sequence of draws. Maybe the the variance in terms of how they're preparing their decks. Like for example, Tiddler puts shield block, and uh, other people don't. Mm-hmm. So, I'm 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 wondering. I'm curious, man. Why do you think Grim Patron hasn't been succeeding as much? Uh, to, to be honest, what I think is that they've been killing themselves a lot. Um, they have. You mean the blowback is too high? Whoa! Wait a minute. Wait! 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 wait whoa, whoa! Did Tiddler just not attack the face there with the armor suit? Oh, you're right. 
I was looking at the match oh. history bar, but um, you know, the yeah. armor smith is a very pacifist. Car. <laughs> it loves it loves ev it wants everyone to get along. Okay. Well, obviously that was a mistake. Let's just say that first. But uh, I actually think that playing Hearthstone around might, Jones. I think Hearthstone needs more ancient watcher esque type of cards. You know, um, things that can't can attack. attack. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I would actually really like, um, like a, you know how there's defender type cards or wall type cards in other CCGs or TCGs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like taunt that, and can attack. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Waller, defender type cards. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And control decks would really love that. It's just aggro decks have yeah. been really dominant so far in the meta. So I wouldn't be too unhappy if they yeah. introduced those cards. It could be like a one-two taunt. Every damage it takes is one damage type of thing. Like those kinds of things are really interesting and dynamic because then priest has like legitimate ways to make it oh really man good. if priest buffs up those minions that'll be pretty yeah cool. those those kinds of cards because i'm not like reinventing the wheel these are cards that exist in other games okay. but um nonetheless uh Tito doesn't need any of that he's got a bunch of ways to dissect this aggressive board seizing through his own means okay and yeah. the challenge is that um Zoo needs to establish a board to pressure the warrior before it can start answering its threats uh through mass combos but okay. it's not really doing that. Bane of Doom. Is it? Should it be Bane of Doom? Not Lothab? No, yeah, Bane of Doom! Obviously, it should be Bane of Doom. Actually, I like Lothab after a death fight, so we can't uh, probably get more patrons with, like, you know, stuff like Inner Rage and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. man, Bane of Doom is so juicy here. Like, what if you get Malganus? If you get Malganus, do you just, like, win? Because you can't answer it with, um, there's no execute. Yeah, I, actually, I think Doom Guard sometimes is better than Malganus. Oh, Sea Giant. Oh, that's, Sea Giant. Oh, that's actually way smarter. Actually. That's really smart. We 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 forgot about the Haunted Creepers uh, being able to split into two. Yeah. Band Doom is still pretty enticing, but no, I think it's really I hard think to play Sea Giant. Giant. I think Sea yes. Giant is the way the better play, because like patrons usually kill all your stuff after the AOE, and if you play a Sea Giant into patrons, I don't think they really care about it. So yeah, I like this play a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you think about other ways that um, this class can, or this deck can struggle with, if you think about how it compares to Handlock and how it deals with bigger threats, the Sea Giant being put out was almost the same exact timing. It's like a turn 5, 8, 8. You know, how else do you deal with it other than execute? And even if you have to execute, do you have the ways to deal with it immediately? Like you have to have uh, a minion on board plus a way to activate it. Yeah, it's, uh, if you put it that way, it's kind of like, uh, what's this face called? The Fell Reaver, right? Pretty much. Oh, yeah, sure. Fell Reaver with no drawback. No drawback at all. Yeah. That's, That's why Fell Reaver needs a drop. You don't, you <laughs> want to hear something really funny, Amaz? I think, you know, you would shake your head when you hear this. Okay. But I remember, uh, Fel, like, Reyna was telling me how much he didn't like Fell Reaver, even though he really wanted to. Oh, that's terrible, man. That's dude. pretty bad. Uh, um,. He was telling me that even if Fell Reaver was a 30-30, he wouldn't play. Wow. And it's, and then this was this was like a couple months ago, you know. And then okay. he's like, even if it was a 50-50, he wouldn't play it. And I was like, really? And he's like, okay, maybe if it was a 29-29, I wouldn't play it. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fell Reaver needs a buff, TLDR. Mm -hmm. He said sarcastically before people start taking him seriously. Yeah. Now, but, yeah. Um, the thing is, this <laughs> this uh, Sea Giant can get followed up with more threats. Wow! Looks like Savage is in a pretty dominating position here, yeah. and it's just because Tiller didn't really draw the Death Bite no in time, really. Yeah, no Death Bite, uh, no Executes. Yeah, and I think that's it, and Tiller's gonna pretty much oh. drop this game. Yeah, there's no way for him to survive this much damage. No way. He won't even survive the next swing on board. There's 13, and he would be at 13 max health. Well, it seems like uh, Kalento's going to gain a buddy here, as Tiddler also goes 0-4. <gasps> oh we... my goodness. Oh. I, think there's a co I think there's a weird coincidence of Moz. If you win a DreamHack, one of the hardest tournaments in the world for Hearthstone, oh, man. you end up going 0-4. 0-4. Mm -mm -mm. This and... is pretty bad. Yeah, if you kind of go with that kind of record, I don't yeah. think your teammates can really, you know, carry you that much. But eh, maybe it's just a, 
just this week. Hopefully, the uh, Team Celestial will come back for more. But for this week, <laughs> the uh, first one, Team Liquid, is going to get the victory. It's highly unrepresentative of how Tiddler even... You know, like, again, Tiddler and Kalento, these are two really amazing players. Yeah. Um, and they end up being... Not necessarily the liability, it's just, just that they ended up having to lose. Uh, you have to kind of see it as a <laughs> team, as a cohesive unit, because they're bringing a lineup. Conquest is about lineups, it's not about individual decks. Okay. And so if you think about it that way, the teams have to play kind of as one entity, so to speak. It just happens Makes that sense. it breaks down to the who's controlling or who's piloting the decks. Um, yeah. So you can point at Tiddler, you can point at Kalanto, but ultimately it's... Uh, Team effort. It's a team effort. So okay. Team Celestial is the one that loses here, not Tiddler. For the, for everybody. I just right. want to go ahead and throw it out there. Okay, okay for I that. I have That's a question, good. though, Amaz. If we're going to go ahead okay. and give uh, 5000 bucks to the MVT, doesn't it favor certain people from playing like the best decks and that way they like they you encourage a little uh, discourse between the players. Like, I'm going to play the best deck so I can get the best record. And it's like, you can't play. You have to play Paladin. You don't get it. Yeah. Well, it's just a little bonus uh, thing, and I guess winning is important, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, don't need to go. Th you don't need to focus on five k bounty when you have the quarter million dollars. Are you really gonna call that prize MVT now? It's the master yes. of duels. Okay. <laughs> God damn it! Do we have a standings chart for the viewers right now? I hope uh, we do. We have them updated right. so we can actually um, recap on the um, whole week. Well, this is the recap for this series. Uh, the, the Team Liquid does beat Celestial without Tiller winning a single game. Unfortunate for them, but we will see them next week. And of course, we'll see Liquid next week along with all the teams for a new decks and uh, new games as well. Um, if we kind of wait for this frame to pass. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we, guys, this is the end of the week. We have two days a week, I believe, for the Arcon League. Yes, um, that's we have correct. four teams to play, or eight teams, four teams play per day. And so the next week we'll be having um, on Thursday, July 8th, where we'll yes. mix it up once again with who plays whom. The standings haven't updated, but just to go ahead and show you, you can go ahead and vision it. We have Value Town, Nylum, Force and Boys, and Team Liquid taking their first series. But most importantly, for the second place teams, which is, you know, four of them tied for second. I guess they're tied for fifth, though, if they want to keep uh, technical. Uh, well, the game wins should be kind of, you know, sorted out the placements. Yeah. But we'll fix yeah, that. I guess so. uh, don't worry about that. But the game yeah, wins do matter, though. Celestial only ended up winning oh, how many? There. Three? Yeah. So yeah. they're tied with Cloud9 for last place. Well, we do have the next week's uh, uh, matchups in. Uh, it's actually all in the schedule if you um, look into our website, uh, which is uh, teamarcon.com slash uh, league. We're actually going to improve the uh, page with more graphics soon. But week two, which is uh, once again July 8th, it's going to be Value Town versus Force and Boys. That's going to be amazing. The two um, teams with all the players. And we're going to also get Archon versus Temple Storm. Now that will be also a pretty oh exciting boy. match. No, oh, man. are you gonna cast that with me, Amos? Oh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, no. well, oh, I'm not. Even, I might not even be casting that one. You yeah, have to yeah, but me. Okay. I'm I think I would play up. I think I would play up and manufacture too much drama. Maybe, but it'll be fun, right? <laughs> uh, no, the point is, like, I'm not supposed to be casting this. Uh, I'm supposed to be like on the um, behind the scenes and actually trying to work all the assets and calling out the people to do this and do that. And uh, it, it went pretty well, actually, with me casting as well. I'm kind of the backup. But uh, shout out to all the production guys and everybody behind the scenes. You're doing fantastic. Shout out to the casters as well. Ferdinand, you're amazing as always. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, appreciate it. Thanks for stopping in and uh, being able to sub in. You know, we we sat wreckful, but you know, we'll we'll go ahead and <laughs> help the I can't it. Yeah. All right. So I guess we can wrap this up. That's right. Thank you so much for everybody watching. Make sure to hit the follow button on the channel. We'll see you guys next week on Thursday, July 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Same channel. We'll see you guys then. Have Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. We'll see you guys Wednesday. <laughs>